LSU, the designated visiting team in their home stadium today. Here's a look at their starting lineup. They changed it up. Four lefties at the top, including Antoine Duplantis in the three-hole, the all-time record holder for LSU hits. It's all about the offense with Antoine Duplantis. 11 home runs, a career high for him in the three spot. They're going to need him because Josh Smith, we know he will get on base. And they're facing a true test. C.J. Van Eyck on the mound for Florida State. Sophomore out of Steinbrenner High School in the Tampa area. 6-1 right-hander already with 10 wins this season against just three losses. He's had two of his best the last two times out. For Van Eyck, 20 punch outs in 14 innings over his last two starts. It's one of the reasons why Florida State is here. The first of those was against NC State. Florida State loses that game. They probably don't get into the postseason. Now they're one win away from Omaha. They're one of the last four teams in the tournament. They're wanting to be one of the final eight standing, chasing their first ever national title. Guys, watch the change up today for Van Eyck. There's a lot of lefties in this lineup for LSU. He's going to use it plenty. Josh Smith, Yankee second round pick this week, sends a fly ball to left. A quick one. He's been aggressive at the plate. Two pitches, one down. Let's take a look at the synergy breakdown for C.J. Van Eyck. All right, so here's what we'll see from a pitch mix standpoint. The fastball will be up to 95, 96. He uses about half the time. The first pitch of this game was a changeup, and you'll see probably more than 20% today against a lineup from LSU that has six of the nine guys hitting from the left-hand side. Curveball is a major league pitch as well, and all three are working. Van Eyck looks like a big leaguer. This is one of the change-ups for Paul Maneri today in the batting order. He's going with Giovanni DiGiacomo as the DH. He gives him great speed, and he's hoping for more contact. A 278 hitter with one big home run on the season. It came in the SEC tournament. Freshman from Naples, Florida, at a Canterbury High School. LSU looking for more offense after dropping game one 6-4 to, to Florida State last night. find the fastball and the count goes to one and two. They go right back there again. Guys, that was 98 on the speed pitch down here at the stadium. They'll go right back there again. The changeup will play today for Van Eyck, but so will that elevated fastball that's just up and out of the zone. Miss low that time with 96. I'm with you, Kyle. That should have been pitched up. And if he can get that curveball early in the count over, which he did against the Giacomo, I'm telling you right now, could be nasty. And this one's lifted to shallow right field. The Santos, the second baseman, back and coming in charging hard. Reese Albert. Albert's got to be careful. He's playing with a bad right shoulder and took that tumble. They want to make sure he stays healthy and still has those swings. And uh, he's hearing it from the LSU fans. Uh, they might be saying, if you were there yesterday, I hit it right over your head. That's a shoulder harness. Reese Albert, sublex right shoulder. Didn't hurt him on his swings. Was he telling the LSU fans that he's number one? They were number one. Saying hello. Temperatures in the mid 90s here in Baton Rouge. They might be in the mid 90s, but out in that sun, on the right field area, it is a lot hotter than the mid 90s. It is baking out there. Here's the senior, Antoine Duplantis, one for five in game one yesterday. Senior from Lafayette, Louisiana. Has a school record of 355 hits. He's been in the lineup just about every day. School record here at LSU in games played, too. 12th round pick of the Mets this week. Three pitch arsenal for Van Eyck. That changeup when it's working, the curveball for strikes. Ten pitches to get three outs, including his first strike out of the game. Good start for C.J. Van Eyck coming off of a great start. The last two weeks, one, two, three in the first seminal offense. We come back. We head to the home half of the first inning, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and Alec Box Stadium with Tiger Stadium in the background. There is no atmosphere like this one. Talking with some of the Florida State players, they said we couldn't hear each other. Catcher Matt Nelson said I couldn't even hear the umpire. Didn't seem to bother the offense late, especially Reese Albert. A couple of big home runs, a three-run blast in the seventh to tie it, 
Insurance run on a solo shot in the ninth. Showed he could handle the fastball in, and then he'll be protected by Drew Mendoza, and I think that's the biggest key. What do you do? Do you pitch around him to face the star hitter in Mendoza, which leads the team in home runs, and this kid is going to have to deal with that offense. Yeah, and it's the freshman, Landon Marceau, who was very heralded coming out of high school, scuffed a little bit early, but really the last four starts has been outstanding. Over those four starts, he's not given him more than two earned runs. He's gone at least five innings in all four, so he's pitching his best at a time that they need it most, because LSU needs to win today to keep the season alive. Eighth, uh, pardon me, 37th round pick of the Yankees coming out of Destrehan High School last summer. Mike Salvatore in the leadoff spot for Florida State. Fourth in the nation in blocks, 15th in on base percentage, but they can also run into 15th in the country in home runs, 25th in slugging. Seven home runs in the season for the senior Salvatore. And nothing to two from Landon Marceau. Good placement on him right now. Both teams have had to deal with the shadows. The lights are on here at the box. Try to mitigate it. But with the good stuff from both pitchers. Offense should be light early on. 0 2 from Marceau. Goes with the curveball. 1 2 3 for Salvatore. Here's a look at the synergy numbers for Landon Marceau. Foul ball. Foul ball on Garza. Thought he caught it. I didn't hear the foul. And this one, that's, that's the only way you're going to be able to tell. Salvatore wouldn't go anywhere. Garza held the ball up immediately. Problem is he didn't have the ball. Love it. The ball was on the ground. I think the ball hit the ground anyway first, and he showed it. Good luck with the ball back. Well, good luck hearing anything in this ballpark. Ball and two strikes now to Salvatore. He was 0 for 4 in the leadoff spot yesterday for Florida State. Ninth round pick of the Seattle Mariners this week. And the Athens Regional MVP. He went nine for 14 last week. Florida State breathes through the Athens Regional. Connect up for the minute. And the University of Georgia to make it here. Bounces through the right side. And Salvatore getting a second lease in the at bat after the foul tip comes up with a leadoff single. And now Marceau's synergy numbers. It's a mix of stuff for the freshman. He's going to throw a lot of fastballs. We've seen it as high as 93 already today. He'll pitch 88 to 92 right in that range and about 70%. The curveball and the changeup. I think you'll see more changeups today from Marceau as well. At one point in Florida State's lineup, they show four out of five left-handers. Five total in this lineup. That changeup will need to be there today. And that point in the lineup starts right now with the lefty Reeves Albert. You guys think the fans here at the box don't know who's coming up to the plate? It seems like they've already greeted him out in right field. They so. greeted him yes, in right they field did. and they just booed the living daylights out of him <laughs> yes. when he, his name got announced. I love it. This is what this is all about here in LSU. The Baton Rouge fans, they know their baseball. And so many of these LSU players are homegrown, including Marceau from just around the corner, Destrehan High School. And heading the count to Albert. Destrehan, by the way, going to have a Pro Football Hall of Famer inducted this summer. And Ed Reed. Athletes all over the state. See if Marceau does what was not done yesterday against Albert, which was pitching him away, away from his strength, and pitching to that injury on his shoulder. Damon Shine, and he got strike three. A great spot there, though. Surprised him. It did. I think especially after yesterday, where both fastballs that Reese Albert hit were middle in, so you probably think maybe they're going to go away a little bit, did, and then that time just locked him up. Couldn't pull the trigger. And it's a good early sign for Marceau, a guy that throws close to 70% fastballs, to have the confidence in that pitch 
to throw in late in the count against the guy that hit two home runs yesterday. And now here's Drew Mendoza. Big stick in his Florida State lineup. Team high 16 home runs. Top five in the country in walks. He is patient and he can drive it. Keep a close eye on Salvatore. Five stolen bases on the season. Mendoza, third round pick of the Nationals last week. First team all ACC performer. Mendoza's been a regular since he arrived on campus. They say he went. Ramon Amandares, who had the plate yesterday, said he didn't hold his swing. Two yesterday, but he was walked three times. Chopped it off of his calf. And this is a different look for a lot of hitters with what Marceau is doing on the mound. His release point is way over the top. It's not three quarters. And a lot of those pitches, which you think are going to be down, has good tilt to it. And they end up being a lot of strikeouts looking, a lot of strikes looking. Hitters will give up on a lot of those pitches. I'll tell you the other thing, there's not a lot of guys out of that slot no. that have a real yeah. change up. That it's usually that changeup is a little bit lower slot. It's a combination from Marceau that's rare to see. He's pounding the strike zone, nine out of ten strikes. And that one up. One ball, two strikes to Mendoza. I, I like the placement of where that pitch was. Raise the eye level. Look where the arm slot is, way over the top. He clears his head to allow that arm to get through there. Now it's time for that changeup, down and away. Two balls and two strikes to Drew Mendoza. Suffered a broken jaw early in his freshman season. Came back from that, and he has started every game since. 167th consecutive start today. Marcel likes that changeup. Uh, uh, that fastball does it. Goes with it. Keeps the hitter. The hitter has to just be dialed in with it. But the angle is really tough to barrel. Chance for two, Broussard to Smith, back to first, and they're into it early in Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge, Louisiana, home of hot summers, the swollen Mississippi River, and great baseball. The fans here absolutely love it. Six national championships in their fantastic and storied career, and these are two blue blood programs. Florida State leads the all-time series 10 to nine, but they broke a losing streak with the win last night. LSU eliminated from Omaha two years ago, and they're meeting in the tournament prior to Omaha for the first time since 1975 when they got together in Starkville, Mississippi. Mike Martin's fourth season at FSU was the last time they were here. That was 1983. 11 told me before this tournament started, he said, I don't even remember being here or the stadium or the fans, but I remember Skip Burtman being in the other dugout. He said, we had some knockdown, drag-out battles, and they uh, shared a hug today. Skip yeah. Burton came to the Florida State dugout before the game, and Mike Martin genuflected, got down on one knee, and bowed to him. Here's a bouncer to the shortstop. Salvatore's got to hurry, and he takes care of Daniel Cabrera. How about this? Over 2,000 wins for Mike Martin, 870 wins, and five national championships for Skip Burtman, the longtime LSU head coach. Two of the greatest in our sport scene right there. He told me today he was overwhelmed by the welcome that he got. Both times he's shown up at the ballpark this weekend. Had a hard time getting in yesterday. Autographs, handshakes, and hugs. He said, I don't know if there's another place like this anywhere. 
is right. Here's Zach Watson. Pounds the curveball to the shortstop Salvatore. And the senior makes another play. Five up, five down so far. There's the legend, former LSU head coach, former LSU athletic director. This is the reception. <laughs> this is the visiting coach, mind you. <laughs> this is fantastic. And this is his final go round. He will retire at the end of this year. After 40 seasons as a head coach at Florida State, and he will see his final sunset as a college baseball coach either here on the Bayou or the nation's heartland in Omaha. Needs just one win to return to the College World Series. You know what we need? We need the, the glasses that he had, like, but we need those to make a return, too. Remember those glasses? <laughs> that they, it may have been when you were playing. It was probably about that long ago. Those were before I was playing. Oh, so They were out there, though. We need those to make a return. Can they bring the gold, the real gold unis back for Omaha? You've still got yours, right? I, I do. It doesn't fit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> Here's Cade Beloso put into the starting lineup today by Palmineri and over at first base. And therefore is back. Beloso DH yesterday. How about these? Now those have been discontinued for quite hat. some time. Look the hat back too. That yes, was, that yes was that's the, the one. That was the Bruce Tanner, remember, that he went to the Pirates. Chuck Tanner. Yeah, yeah Chuck Tanner. Yeah. Bruce's son played for Florida State. Beloso coaches a two-out walk from C.J. Van Eyck, and that'll bring Selwood Garza to the plate. A lot of respect against Beloso. They went off speed even when they were behind in counts. So far, 19 pitches for Van Eyck. I like right-handed hitters versus Van Eyck. It takes away, nullifies a little bit of that changeup, and now he becomes more of a two-pitch pitcher, fastball, curveball. Could be one of the best matchups here, Garza versus Van Eyck. Garza has been on a tear. Came into this weekend on an 11 game hit streak. Hit 500 last week in the regional win for, ba uh, for LSU here in Baton Rouge. They beat Stony Brook and they knocked off Southern Miss twice. Garza 100 points better against right handed pitchers than lefties. He's at 370. Should be a good opportunity for Saul right here. 2 0 pitch, two outs, runner at first base. Sell out on the fastball. He's got the power to make a difference. Found it off of his foot. Or did he get his knee? He just always seems to miss that padding. <laughs> right. You have the, that little shin guard. For some reason, it'll get you on the toe or on the knee. You stay fastball. Stay fastball. Through the left side. First hit of the day for LSU. Two on with two out in a scoreless game. Well, they did, and he got to it. And last swing, Garza looked like he was a little bit late on the fastball. And if I see late on the fastball, if I'm going to throw it again, I, I want to go in. This time, ball down. Makes a one-pitch adjustment a little bit quicker to it. Gets the barrel to it. Shoots it to left for the first hit of the game for LSU. Seems like right-handed hitters take better at-bats against Van Eyck than left-handed hitters. More confidence in Van Eyck, more when it comes to conviction to be able to throw that changeup down and away to lefties. Here's a lefty and Chris Reed. An incredible story. The senior from Baton Rouge out of St. Michael was cut for the team in the fall. Palmineri reached out to him over the winter and said, we need you back. And he has been a major contributor. Always seems to come up with a big hits at opportune times. Was flipping burgers at walk-ons and coaching a little league team. In fact, that's the only pitching he saw for about six months was from ten-year-olds. Bring him back.
Took 91 for a strike. Tony Norris, our home plate umpire today. Standing room only. They jammed 11,636 into this place last night. Three and one. Ben Ike wanted that pitch a little bit inside. Nelson trying to sell it. Great take. And Reed probably the most patient in this LSU line. Doesn't have a lot of power, but he's going to make it throw strikes. Just one home run in the season. And this one's ladled to left. Tim Becker has plenty of space. And that's going to close the second inning. No runs, a hit, two left on. Busy day of college baseball. Let's find out more to the studio at Kevin Connors. This beautiful ballpark, just 10 years old here in Baton Rouge, Alec Box Stadium. And the box is bursting with fans once again. Look at this. They had 11,600 in the building last night. That's well more than the Marlins season average. For 24 years, LSU has led college baseball in total attendance, and they are at it again this season in this postseason. Alex and there's not a roof. <laughs> there is no roof. There is no air conditioning in the bleachers. Six-time national champions. They call that billboard the intimidator above the bleachers and right. And this has been an intimidating presence for Florida State. They said they haven't played in an atmosphere like this ever. And indeed, their first visit to this version of the box. This is the freshman Robbie Martin. Marceau misses high. Robbie Martin on the ACC All Freshman team. He's out of Tampa's Jefferson High School, an athletic training major. time last year he was dominating the high school scene in Florida he hit 453 he had an ERA of 0.94 and the Marlins took him with their 37th round selection last June the 3-1 almost hit him regardless it's ball four lead off man on and JC Flowers coming up Flowers is a busy guy Started in center field yesterday, came on to pick up his 12th save of the season. This is always an interesting inning. We saw it already in the top half with Van Eyck after getting two quick outs. Pitch count went up a little bit. You always want to see after the adrenaline is over, how will they react in the second inning? So far, Marceau walking. Martin. Fastball low that time for Marcel. I guess J.C. Flowers has been used to uh, time management. He was a two-sport star in high school, both baseball and football. As a wide receiver, scholarship offers from University of Missouri, North Carolina, Colorado, among others. And he originally committed to Kentucky to play baseball for Gary Henderson. Henderson retired from that spot, and Flowers was free to move on. What a present for Florida State. It was, and I think his offense got better actually when he took the mound. Offensively struggled his freshman year, sophomore year. Had a broken jaw, sliding into second base, ball hits him in the jaw, lost some time. Defensively has always been steady, but once he took that mound, offensively, it just seemed to relax a lot more. Fourth round pick of the Pirates last week. Shows bunt, drops it down. Marceau's got a hurry. He slipped on the turf, and everybody's safe. J.C. Flowers with a bunt single, and there's two on with nobody out for Florida State. One thing that Florida State does well, and they've done it for years. Mike Martin has a sign from the dugout. He'll yell, yes, 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 but watch his eyes. Looks over at third base. He peeks over. He sees he has an opportunity. Never moves ahead. Just the eyes. Now he lays it down and points that bad head right at the second baseman. The way Coach Martin has always taught that. 
J.C. Flowers continuing the line, moving it now. Runners at first and second, applying pressure to the defense. 40 years of coaching for number 11 in the Florida State dugout. Here's the first baseman, Carter Smith. I know a lot about that for Florida State. My junior year, I ended up having 13 bunt base hits because Coach Martin would tell you from the dugout if the third baseman was back or not. And he'd do it verbally. So you didn't have to look. You didn't have to, but you always wanted to take a peek, okay, yeah. has he scooted in or not? Now the third baseman is in. First baseman midway. They had issues with verbal communication in yesterday's game, having a hard time in hearing the dugout on a stolen base attempt on a delayed steal midway through the game. Catcher Matthew Nelson was trying to get a verbal cue from Mike Martin Jr. And he said, I, I can't hear you. And Mike Martin Jr. usually runs the offense. 11 will run. If it's the bump plays like that, the surprise plays, I would not be surprised if he takes the bunt off right here 2-0. Twenty start of the season for Carter Smith. And he looks at a fastball in for a strike. Maybe a little bit low. You would think after 40 years, you might have to change your signs for simply yes, yes, yes. Oh, and we had a joke about it with uh, J.D. Drew when I was a teammate of his in, in St. Louis. I was on deck. Third baseman was back, and I yelled, yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And J.D. Drew had to step out of the, bo uh, step out of the box and say, really? I don't think J.D. Drew is going to bunt the leaks. <laughs> Two on pitch opportunity for Florida State and the bunt is fouled off. Well, that approach was not good. He stabbed off the baseball right there. With Mike Martin Jr., 22nd season as an assistant to his dad, played for his dad, and a team that made it to Omaha. Known affectionately as Meat. It's that simple. 11 and Meat. Two Florida State institutions. Smith was 0 for 2 yesterday, but he drew a pair of walks. And this long drive goes straight away center field. Robbie Martin will be stopped at third, almost ran right around his third base coach, and has to hustle back. And Mike Martin Jr. is going to have a talk. With Robbie Martin, he he put his hand up in a hurry. Almost ran right through that sign. This field has been watered big time because of the heat. Good piece of hitting right there to center field. A great job in center field by Watson to get that ball in. It's all about the jump in center field. The execution, yes, but get to the baseball as quick as you can and get it in. Hit the cutoff, which he did. Now you have a force at any position. No outs, bases loaded. Freshman Nander DeSantis hit the plate for Florida State. Switch inning middle infielder from Panama City, Panama. And they start him off off speed, nothing in one. Good pitch. He has yet to throw that curveball. Did it first pitch right here. DeSantis bites on it. Corners are in. They will take the force at the plate. They know who's on the mound for Florida State. That's Van Eyck. They, not, they might not be able to score a lot of runs against that stuff. Breaking ball to the right side. Veloso kicks the bag. Need to tag it home. And they got it for a second. And they'll say he's out. The ball came loose. Martin will go ahead and step on the dish. Home plate umpire Tony Morris had to have seen the ball come out in the tag and still punched him out. I don't think he ever saw the ball come up. The throw was perfect, but Loso did everything right at first base. All three umpires, I think all, the other three saw it, and they might reverse this one. But Beloso, great job at first base. The presence takes him to his left, tags him, perfect throw to home. The tag is there, but the ball flies out. That should be reversed. You get runners now at second and third. Well, as he, the conference is still right in front of home plate. Eduardo, he was, Tony Norris was looking right at the play. Yeah, and fellas, I mean, you could see it right away, too. Afterwards, Garza made the motion to try to sell it. 
and say that it was on a transfer, which it, from here it didn't look like it. I snuck back behind home plate. Mike Martin Jr. sprinted from the third base coach's box to its own play right afterwards. David Yule just uh, ruled him safe. Paul Maneri comes rushing in from the LSU dugout. If there's an argument here, and I don't think it's accurate, but if there's an argument here, they're going to try to say that it was on a transfer. And it was not. You could see clearly that his right hand was nowhere near the mitt. It was right when the slide made contact with the mitt, the ball came popping out. Makes the tag right there. Good hard slide. You have to be making an attempt. Everyone from the Florida State dugout, they were on it. Fastest I've seen Coach Martin 11 move from his spot in the dugout. You're right, Eddie. Never reached in for it, so there should be no transfer. But the umpire crew is going to put on the headsets and talk to the folks in Pittsburgh and try to figure this one out via replay. Eddie, I want to go back to this for a minute because you're you're good with the with the Beloso decision to go to first right away. I, I'm. I'm I'm perfect with it. I don't have a problem because the ball is taking towards first base. It's early in the game. Get the out. You still had enough time to make the throw to home plate, which he did. And if Garza holds on to the ball, now you have runs at second and third with two outs. It's, this is a momentum changer, a big one. By the way, KP, where'd you go? Well, listen, I'm hanging out by home plate. Thought maybe you went tailgating on us. No, I just kind of got tired of you two, so I went somewhere else. I was wondering Hashtag where you Comfy back there. How'd you find an open seat? I uh, paid somebody. AKP, if you have stay safe after review. And so the run will count. And Florida State has an early but controversial lead. And you can tell right here with the slide a hard, strong slide, which you're taught to do right through the plate. The, bag, the ball comes right out of the mitt. The call is made, but immediately it was not able to see. That's Tony Norris behind the plate, was not able to see that the ball had popped out. The rule, an error on Saul Garza, his second error of the season. So runners at second and third, and now the infield in. Got to be well here with the squeeze play. A lot of speed at third base. And a curveball in for a strike to Matthew Nelson, the catcher. So far, Matthew Nelson in this postseason between regional and now the Super Regional. Yesterday, one for four during the regional combined three for 17. Talking to Nelson before the game about the atmosphere here. He was the one telling me that not only could he not hear any of the verbal commands from the Florida State dugout, he said as a catcher, I couldn't even hear the umpire. And he sends a line drive to left. J.C. Flowers will score. They'll stop Smith at third. And Florida State has jumped out to a 2-0 lead. Jumping out early, fastball down and in. Nice piece of hitting by Nelson. Looks like the shadows aren't really affecting these knolls right now. Hard hit, again, the outfield for LSU doing a nice job of attacking the baseball, getting it in. So now the nine hole hitter in the fairy tale story, Tim Becker. Becker played on the Florida State club team last year. He was the captain and the team president. Joined the squad this season as a walk on, and his butt will find the glove of Garza for the second out. Well, that was a squeeze play. It was not executed well on Becker's side as he was trying to get out of the box in a hurry instead of just laying it down. Giving LSU a chance right here. He's been yeah. swinging the bat well. The bat head stays behind. He jabs at it. 
It's a safety there too, Eddie. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's a safety and he's got plenty of time, but he was peeling off like he was trying to take it with him. Right, and the jab that he did at that baseball right there just was yeah. not good. I really like those seats, KP. So do I, that's why I'm sitting here. Here's Mike Salvatore now. When did you change into shorts? Huh? <laughs> when did you change into shorts? I come prepared now. Forgot my sunglasses, but thankfully the sun just went back under. <laughs> what happened to the kid who kicked out of this seat? It'll be all right. We all got to learn sometime. <laughs> <laughs> Here's five bucks for Dippin' Dots. See you in two innings. Sabatore reached on a base hit in the first inning. That was a really good block by Garza. 2 0 count. Can't give in on Salvatore. He can put the ball in play really well. Keep the force play at second just in case. Two outs. Smith the run at third. It's Nelson at first. And this flare is going to drop over the glove of Smith. Florida State out in front, 3 0 here in the second. KP, what do you see from your vantage point when it comes to the Florida State hitters and their aggressiveness? Well, it's the same thing that we've seen for the last two weeks. I mean, I know that yesterday, the first five innings, um, Paul Henry, Todd Peterson had him figured out. But after that, it's it's the same aggressive offensive approach. It's interesting. We talk so much about the patience of Florida State. They worked themselves into 12 full counts yesterday. Today against Marceau, they know they're going to see a bunch of strikes. And when they get something to handle, they're going after it. It does surprise me that nobody's down in the LSU bullpen right now. Because you got to sell out now. I mean, there is there is no tomorrow at this point. If that means that you go to your best in the second or third to keep it close, especially the way that CJ Van Eyck has looked so far. You think sometimes when you have a lead like LSU did going into the sixth inning that they already have thrown their best and what they have in the bullpen right now is just not enough against this patient offense? Well, I don't. they don't have length in the bullpen. Well, sp Specifically from Todd Peterson and Hess. I mean, Hess can probably give you six to uh, maybe six outs today. You do have length from Fontenot if you want it. Fontenot was not in there very long yesterday. I, I don't know how we could possibly say Peterson today, but I just I don't think you can wait much longer. At a minimum, have somebody loose because Albert could hit in the seats and make it six nothing. There's nobody down there warming up right now. He hit him over the seats yesterday for his first home run, a three run shot. Struck out looking on an inside fastball first time up today. Nine home runs in the season for Reese Albert. Four of them have come in the postseason. Third team, all SC, ACC, excuse me, for the sophomore out of Jupiter High School. Marcel gets a swing and a miss, nothing in two. Him on a fastball in the inside part, giving him two off speed pitches so far in this at bat. Would you come inside here? And go back in the door. Left that one up. Too good of a pitch, 0 2. He got away with a breaking ball that was you know, caught way too much of the plate right there. I like burying something here. Nothing wrong with bearing a changeup down the way too in the dirt. You get a swing and miss, get back in the dugout, see if you can get your offense going. Came up and in, one and two. Purpose pitch. Elevate the eyesight. To probably go back down. Hey, by the way, fellas, I can now understand why Matthew, Matthew Nelson couldn't hear anything yesterday. Mm -hmm. And it's loud down here. When they get going, it is loud. <laughs> 
There's that curveball in the dirt and a very needed strikeout to end the inning. Albert was a hero yesterday, 0 for 2 with a couple of Ks so far today. But Florida State has opened up a 3-0 lead. Let's take it to Kevin Connors. Sitting down with there with the big wigs, you might come home with a new car if you're not careful. Talk about me. Yeah, well, we're, we're always, we, we were talking about you between innings. When you, I mean, you realize air. when you talk into a microphone, other people can hear you. Like, mm. I can hear you, right? You know that. Yeah, I'm worried about it. By uh, the way, KP, if you want, you can move up a few rows. Yeah. If you yes. want. Yes. Yeah, I'm waiting for an usher to tell me that, Eddie. I'm not taking your, I'm not taking your word for it. <laughs> I don't want to get thrown out, man. I want to see the rest of this. Brant Broussard at the plate for LSU. And Broussard looks at 96 from C.J. Van Eyck. Ball in a strike now for the senior from Baton Rouge. It's always different when you get down behind the plate for a guy like Van Eyck. Different vantage point. What are you seeing down there, KP, that we don't necessarily see from up here? I'm seeing an upgrade right now. Oh, nice. told I could move down to. So what do you think about that? <laughs> there we go. Baby steps. No, I just, I tell you, there, there's a few things. One, um, velocity plays different the closer you get to it. And, and one of the things from down here is just the, the sight directly by no play. That's why I love watching the game from here. Is you, you can just see exactly what a pitcher's trying to do. You can see what a hitter's doing with their feet. You can see the head of Matthew Nelson when he peeks down to see if there's any movement from Broussard late into account. Oh, that and then you close. can hear that. Now that pitch was outside. Good eye by Broussard on it. 3 2. You got to work the count. Make Van Eyck work. Especially after a long bottom half of the second inning. And Broussard rips it to left. Bottom half of the order getting it done for LSU. Six through nine. Now two for three with a walk. Elevated 95 mile per hour pitch. Broussard working the count, 3-2, gets the fastball up. It's exactly what the LSU Tigers needed. Get Kyle on the bottom left, the base hit, ripped to left field. We call that look the Dan Dockage view. Here's Josh Smith now. Smith, second round pick of the Yankees. It was a stressful draft day on Monday. He thought he'd be going in the first round to the Yankees. Ended up dropping to the second. A lot of confusion, a lot of stress. Talking to him this week, he said, man, if we had to play a game while that mess was going on, I would have been out of my mind. Smith down the line. What a pickup. Need a tag at second. Got it there, and Florida State turns two. Carter Smith at first base, flashing the leather. And we saw Beloso earlier for LSU, and now Smith. Great decision. Ball takes you towards the bag. You have a 3-0 lead. Get the out and then make the throw. Exactly what he does. Gets off the bag, steps on first, gets that out, then a perfect throw to get Broussard at second. Nicely done right there. You end up getting it right to Salvatore. Perfect tag. It's Kellen Levy to get, call him out. Little tapper now in the first pitch from DeGiacomo to Mendoza. A nine pitch inning after the leadoff single from Broussard. And C.J. Van Eyck pitching with a motion for Florida State. Tom Hart, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, happy to be joined by Hall of Famer Paul Maneri, LSU's head coach. Coach, Florida State is known to be a very patient team. What are you seeing from their approach today against Landon Marceau? Well, the first inning, I thought Landon threw an awful lot of strikes, and, you know, he, he did a good job. You know, we went right after him, strike one, strike two, and then didn't fool around. And then the second inning, you know, we started the inning with a walk, which is what allowed everything to go for them. Coach, this is uh, pretty much a do-or-die game for you guys. How patient will you be with Marceau on the mound? Nah, that's a good question, Eduardo. I, I don't think I can be too, too patient, but if I feel like he's still our best guy, he'll stay out there. Coach, thanks so much for your time. We okay, appreciate guys. it. And Coach Palmineri and his LSU team needs to win today to force a decisive game three tomorrow as the Tigers look for a return to Omaha. Six national championships. 
but it's been 10 years since their last one. Drew Mendoza at the plate. Mendoza hit into a double play to end the first inning. Nothing in two. Uh, Kyle Peterson is back with a headset on in the booth. How loud is it down there? It's loud. It's a lot louder than I thought, honestly. I mean, you know, we can hear it up here, but the whole stadium is designed to make the sound go that way, and it is. It's loud, um, and I'm winded. <laughs> <laughs> of course you are. Mendoza collects his first hit. It's a leadoff single, and it'll bring the cleanup hitter, Robbie Martin, to the plate. Something Marceau has not done in the first two innings, and he just did it right now. Threw a curveball late in the count. This is a pitch he usually likes to throw early in counts. This one left it right over the plate with two strikes again. That, that pitch is meant to be in the dirt. Cannot elevate that pitch late in counts. This is a Florida State offense which didn't have a hit in the first five innings yesterday. Since then, nine runs on 11 hits. Robbie Martin drew a walk. He scored on that play at the plate in the second inning that was a ball dropped by Saul Garza on a swipe tag attempt. Winner goes to the World Series in the Lubbock Super Regional. They're in their game three, and Oklahoma State has opened up a 1-0 lead on Texas Tech as the Cowboys look to get back to the College World Series. That Raiders have been a regular lately. What a block. That ball didn't even say not even 53 feet. Garza is just putting everything he can in front of it to keep that in order. Gets him on the right hand. You can't even really practice that. That's, that's one where you just throw your entire body at it. Soft enough too that Mendoza couldn't go anywhere on first base. In the air to left, Cabrera pushed back almost to the warning track. One down now. Game number two of this super regional. Louisville has already punched its ticket to Omaha. Duke and Bandy. Right now, Vandy leads Duke 12 to 2 in that decisive game three. They had a long lightning delay in Nashville. They're in the bottom of the sixth. Ole Miss and Arkansas in a slugfest. Bomb Stadium. That series is tied at one. And what a thriller last night between Michigan and UCLA. Bruins came back in extra innings to tie the series. They'll play for Omaha later tonight. I was bobbing and weaving trying to stay up for that one. Yeah, so was Kyle. Yep. One and zero to J.C. Flowers. Wes and the Rocks calling that one. Uh huh. It was a late night game. They will follow us right here on ESPN two. UCLA, the number one overall seed in this tournament. Michigan trying to get back to Omaha for the first time since Barry Larkin was their shortstop, 1984. Barry Larkin will be. Next Thursday, he'll be over there in Omaha. Yeah, he's going to big league game. Yeah. Tigers and Royals, first ever major league game in the state of Nebraska will be a TD Ameritrade. Flowers could be in the big league soon. Fourth round pick of the Pirates last week. They picked him as a pitcher, even though he hadn't thrown until this season, really. You saw why last night. Mm -hmm. He'll be a pretty good nine hole hitter once he gets to the big leagues, too. Can't just throw him fastballs. We're seeing that trend a little bit in the big leagues. 
Even pitchers pinch hitting in some situations. Because they're athletes, Tom. Okay. Are you still winded? We won the flowers. <laughs> This is J.C. Flowers fired up after picking up his 12th save of the year. Emotion. Trying to quiet a sellout crowd. They did it in game one. And they're forcing Palmineri's hand when it comes to his pitching decisions. Chopper to the left side. Reed goes to second for one. No play at first. The crowd didn't like how Mendoza went into Broussard. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, go to NCAA.com. Now, earlier in this game, Mike Salvatore went hard into the bag at second base. They ruled him out automatically, an automatic double play in the first. And Paul Maneri is arguing the same thing with Kellen Lee yeah. here. What he's arguing here is the pop-up. And he actually has a legitimate argument. Now, ultimately, they got no chance to turn this double play. But watch the pop-up right here at the end. That's if, what the argument is. If he throws the ball, does that make a difference or not? Not from a rule standpoint, okay, no. From, that's what no. I wanted to know because I know people at home want to know the same thing. Because I would teach my player, throw the ball. Throw the ball. I think you sell, it sell it. Up. Right, you sell I it think more you absolutely way. sell it more. There, there's a very legitimate argument. Now, you're I, allowed to go through the bag. You, you must through. go into the bag, and you must have your backside on the ground when you go into the bag. After that, it gets a little bit gray. Well, it, it, the, the pop-up is exactly what, what Paul was arguing right there. Sean Ochenko's assistant explaining what he saw in the play. So Flowers reaches on the fielder's choice. And Carter Smith comes to the plate. Not be surprised. Florida State has JC Flowers here with the green light up three with two outs. He's 10 of 13 on the base paths this year. There's Matthew Beck. Up in the Tigers bullpen. LSU's bullpen had been fantastic through this postseason, but they faltered late in the game last night. And as Paul Maneri explained to us during his in-game interview, he's got to decide if the option in the bullpen is better than the option on the mound. But there is not there isn't much length as you as you said earlier. No, no with the the distance that Todd Peterson went last night, which really put LSU in a position to win the game. Peterson comes into the third inning, the pitches all the way into the sixth. Zach Hess threw close to 30 pitches. There goes Flowers, pitches low. Garza's throw to second is right there, but late. It was a strike to Smith, and Flowers has his 11th bag of the year. Flowers has to be careful when he slides into second. That head has to stay down. And you slide head first, you go through. Watch it pop up and almost gets kneed in the head. Have to keep that head down, slide through. The helmet's what's going to protect you, not the nose. Fit in that jersey, right? <laughs> yes. Back when 11 had when, those glasses. When, gra <laughs> when gravity was my friend. <laughs> Huge secondary lead for JC Flowers. Two balls in a strike. You seeing fatigue from Marceau at this point? Uh, no, I don't. I don't think necessarily fatigue. Fastball command is the biggest thing to watch with Marceau moving forward. He leans on that fastball so much, the command of it's essential. Little dribbler to Broussard. And that'll take care of Florida State in the third, but LSU trails three zip. Back to the studio. Here's Kevin Connors. Just get out there and play Florida State 
baseball. Just get after it. No matter what happens, we roll through it. I want to play tomorrow. I don't want to go home. I don't want to play tomorrow. And Florida State will be playing tomorrow, regardless of the outcome of this one. But should they get the win, they'll head back to Omaha. And what will be Mike Martin's 17th College World Series appearance. And he is the master motivator and knows when to pause to get the best impact out of his players. You saw who was there, right? Kevin Cash. Kevin Cash, manager of the Tampa Bay Rays. 40 wins in all 40 years under Mike Martin. That is an astonishing number and a great example of his success and consistency. They've never had a down there. Ball on one strike to Antoine Duplantis. Van Eyck just missed with the breaking ball, two and one. Just want to see how the LSU Tiger offense makes an adjustment now, second time around the lineup. This one's launched towards right field. Wind pushing it. It is foul. No, oh, it's gone. A home run. Antoine Duplantis with a leadoff shot here in the fourth. Nanner DeSantis is saying, put the headset on. Let's review that one. Reese Albert, the right fielder, said, I don't know what you're talking about. That one had to have been foul. And based on the reaction of the LSU crowd and the bleachers, seems they thought it was foul. Let's see what DePlantis thinks. Sometimes that's going to be the truest thought. You knew it was gone when it left the bat, especially with the way the wind is blowing. The wind right now is going to continue to blow this ball foul. That, mm, that ball's foul. That looks significantly see where, foul. Yeah, see where it hits the Marucci building to the right, right over the C of the SEC, maybe 10 feet above it. David Yule has the first baseline, and that was his call. In fairness, yesterday we had a hard time seeing the balls that were going out to right field also. Watch, see above, see the, the, watch above that SEC sign. See the foul pole to the right of it? Hold on, boys. See the Hold ball on. right there. I know. Stay with me now. I'm with you. Because the key is, I mean, does the baseball, does it disappear when it goes past the foul pole? That, that's the determining factor because if the baseball disappears, it's fair. Yeah. It's if the baseball it lands, doesn't it disappear, foul. it's foul. I think it disappears. I think it's fair. I think it's, I think it's fair. fair. They call it fair, huh? It's the, the best yeah. look in that one is whether or not, you, if you see the baseball the whole time, it's foul. If you lose sight of the baseball, it's because it goes past a fair foul pole and it's it's fair. I, I think that's the right call. I think this ball's gone. Watch this. Do you lose sight of it as it goes? No, I don't lose sight of it. Do I you? totally disagree with you. I Where think you absolutely it? do. Uh, it disappeared. Yes. You're absolutely yeah. right. That ball's a home run. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll admit it. I got one right this week. And now first pick <laughs> swinging for Daniel Cabrera. I could hear, and I could hear, I could hear right now my Twitter from all the LSU fans saying, Perez, you need glasses. I know. I know. <laughs> you've, well, you've, you've got them on. For a long time. I've got them on. No, but I change my prescription yeah. every month. Well, Antoine Duplantis hit a momentum-changing home run in the final game of their three-game series at Arkansas. Now trying to do the same here, but Daniel Cabrera comes out. It swings at the first pitch and taps it three feet. I think he was trying to make it 3 2 real quick. And Antoine DePlantis. First three years he's here, he hit six home runs combined. That's his 12th of the season this year. 
This is Zach Watson, 0 for 1 of the ground out to short. Break it ball, break it ball, change up in this at bat to Watson. That last one, it shows you how good Van Ack's change up is when you can go right on right and get that kind of a swing right there. That's the one he did throw with conviction, had good late life. The velocity difference is 10 to 12 miles an hour off the fastball. Got in on his hands and he pops it up to short. Salvatore. Two down. Here's Kevin Connors in the studio. That's been a thrilling super regional. There have been four ties and three lead changes in the last 12 innings in Lubbock. Here's Kate Beloso. Ten home runs on the season for Beloso. Drew a walk first time up. And the breaking ball missed the run. They're awfully careful with Beloso in his second inning plate appearance. Same off speed here in his second at bat. And another breaking ball. It's a, it's a pretty flat swing from Beloso. And if you can get that breaking ball in the bottom part of the zone, it's going to be hard for him to get the head to it. We'll talk to the all time winning his coach in any sport in NCAA history, Mike Martin, next inning. Quick pitch to McGann. Change up right there. Antoine DePlanis goes yard to get LSU on the board, but the momentum quickly lost. 3 1 Seminoles. Florida State up on LSU 3-1. Tom Hart, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson were joined by the winningest coach in any sport in NCAA history, a man known by his number. Eleven joins us now. Uh, Mike Martin, you've been coaching baseball as a head coach for 40 years. What do you think of this atmosphere here in Baton Rouge? <laughs> I tell you one thing, it's, it's, it's as strong as any that I've ever been in all of my years of coaching. Coach Van Eyck on the mound. So far, he's got that three-pitch arsenal. When have you seen and when did you notice that this kid's Really special. I liked him early, Eduardo. I, I just uh, when when I knew he had a change of it and he hadn't used it, I, I said, "Uh oh." And then I guess it was around the third he started using it more. He's a complete pitcher. He's really good tonight. Eleven. What, what's different for you guys the last few weeks? Because it just seems like a team that's playing with absolutely nothing to lose. You know, Kyle, I really think it's the fact that our freshmen are not freshmen anymore. And we start four, sometimes five. And we've got one at the plate right now. And this young man, is he's gotten better. He's worked hard. He knew he had some shortcomings in the middle of the season. And he worked and worked to get better. And you just uh, you just never know about a young man like this. He might, somebody, might be somebody that two years from now, an organization's going to want him very badly. Coach, thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Hall of Famer Mike Martin. And takes a, a lot of support to do what he does for and has done for so long. And we'd be remiss if we didn't mention his wife, Carol. They met at the high school water cooler back in Charlotte. They married in 1964. Shortly thereafter, they left North Carolina as he came down to trial for LSU, and they will celebrate their 55th anniversary this summer. And he's the first one to tell you that he would not be where he is right now in the success that he's had without Miss Carroll. He had one major concern on the workout day before the Super Regional started, and that was that Carroll would find out that he failed to put on sunscreen before he came to the ballpark. <laughs> he did. He was worried. <laughs> Because <laughs> he did forget. But he owned up for it. Four years as an assistant for his dear friend Woody Woodward. One year as an assistant for Dick Hauser. He got passed over the job that one time. Didn't get passed over the second time. And he 
is a legend. If they get one more win here in Baton Rouge, that'll mean his first appearance to his last appearance in Omaha would be separated by 39 years. Chop to the right side. Beloso flips to Marceau. And there's one down. He talked about maybe they say it as being one of the greats in years to come. He's had some notable players. And guys who starred both on the diamond and the gridiron, like Deion Sanders. Eduardo looked good in the pinstripes. Luis Alisea came over, didn't speak English before they picked him up at the airport. J.D. Drew watching today, I'm sure. And how about the Heisman Trophy winner, Jameis Winston, pitched out of the FSU bullpen. What was, was it Buster, a shortstop when he got there? He was a shortstop, and then, and then they needed a catcher, so Mike Martin Jr. had asked Buster, hey, how about catching? No problem, you end up getting, he said, all right, let's try it. Decent decision. So the rest is history. Not only was Buster Posey the catcher, he was also the closer for the Florida State Seminoles his junior year. Nelson puts it up the middle. What a oh. snag by Smith. Well, the throw was just a little bit wide. Would have been a highlight play, but great range of the Yankees draft pick. He can play, and it's good to see Josh Smith healthy because when healthy, he has the range to make plays like this. And at the end, the throw was a little bit off. Watch how far he has to go to get this one in deep. Momentum takes him out into center field, has to pirouette, spin, and throw. If Peloso picks it, Nelson's probably out. Oh, no doubt he'd be out with it. Always happens to the catcher when they make that great play. So Nelson two for two, the nine hole hitter Tim Becker popped up early on a failed bunt attempt his first at bat with barely got a story in and he swings at that one in the dirt and Nelson will advance to second on the wild pitch. This is one that can't get past you for Garza. He's done a really good job of blocking tonight. But that one man, you, you, you cannot go down and try to backhand this one. You got to go to a knee. When it bounces and it's a change up recognized it but you just you can't try to backhand pick that one you got to block it gives you some kind of a chance to keep Nelson at first Tim Becker went through an open tryout in the fall made the Florida State team he was named the Athens regional team hit three home runs last week and he slices this one to left Nelson will be waved home from third Becker on his way to second. He's done it again. Tim Becker with an RBI double. Club ball is going to become very popular. These major universities. Becker going the other way. Pitch down. And again, that wild pitch, not being able to block it by Garza, creates a run for Florida State with one out here in the top half. In the bottom half of the inning. Beautifully done. Tim Beck Becker's fairy tale season continues. By the way, he's already a graduate, has his MBA. There's a job at Lockheed Martin waiting for him as soon as he hangs up his cleats. Popped up, right side, long run to Plantis into foul territory in the bullpen and just came up empty. What an effort from Antoine Duplantis. So Tim Becker's driven in another run for Florida State. There's been some notable walk-ons to play for Mike Martin and the Florida State program. Mike Fuentes won the Golden Spikes Award. And Mark Gilbert, U.S. Ambassador to New Zealand and Samoa, was a former Florida State basketball player. He also claims to be the only player to throw a baseball in the South Pole. I heard that story earlier this year, and, and an impressive gentleman at that. But Mike Fuentes is one player that Mike Martin will always talk about. Mike Salvatore has two hits today for Florida State. Down in the count, nothing and two. What is it about Mike Martin that would give a guy like Tim Becker confidence to be able to produce in situations like he has in the postseason? Repetition. He continues to practice all of his players, and he does not take anything for granted. 
Tuesday practice, Thursday practice, it does not matter. Line drive to right, Duplantis on his horse, hauls it in. Two down, let's get you back to the studio. Kevin, thanks. Here in Baton Rouge, Paul Maneri making a trip to the mound. And this, it looks like that's going to be it for Marceau. This actually surprises me a little bit because Albert, I think he's going to leave him in against Albert. Hasn't looked good at all at the plate. He's not. He's going to take him out. Struck him out twice already today. Not look comfortable at all with the looks. I think the happy person right now is Reese Albert, but Marcel is out of the game. They'll turn it over to Beck out of the LSU bullpen. The pen will decide if LSU goes to game three. Packed house here. Great crowds throughout college baseball. Final weekend of home action. We'll go to Omaha next week. UCLA and Michigan will meet later tonight as soon as we're done to decide who goes to the College World Series. Right now, Texas Tech leads Oklahoma State 3-1 to one in the fourth inning over at ESPNU. They'll play a game three tomorrow in Fayetteville between Arkansas and Ole Miss. Florida State needs one win to go back to Omaha. 6-7 right-hander Matthew Beck enters from the LSU bullpen, 3-0 with a 2-1-3 earned run average. Talking with Paul Merritt before the game, and he said, I, I like Beck as a matchup guy against this left-handed loaded lineup. The only thing that, that gives me concern is just how patient they are. From a stuff standpoint, he likes the matchup. When Beck gets into trouble is, is when he puts guys on base himself. He's the only notable regular reliever for LSU that has been better against lefties than righties this season. Left-handers hitting 189 against him. Reese Albert hit two home runs yesterday for Florida State. Drove in four. Guys, and by Becker not tag tagging up on that fly ball to right field, it actually takes away a lot of pressure from Garza from calling that curveball. Would have been 90 feet away. Curve on the dirt gets away. Another run that Florida State could add on to it. Instead, he can be aggressive with that hook now. Beck's been great lately. Eight and two thirds consecutive shutout innings. But that's over just five appearances. And so you don't expect Beck to be out there for the rest of this game. Paul is going to have to mix and match the rest of the way. Albert so far has been getting a steady diet of off-speed pitches. Not been able to figure out how to hit it. Goes right back to it. And Reese Albert has struck out three times today after hitting two home runs yesterday. Florida State adds another, though. They're up 4-1 to through four. Standing room only at Alec Box Stadium here in Baton Rouge. Game two of this best of three Super Regional. Florida State in the driver's seat. And they have the lead here. Four to one is the Florida State advantage. They are the home team in the scorebook for today's game. If we go to a game three, LSU will be back to the home team. Fight Tigers. Trying to give themselves a fighting chance. They'll lead off with Saul Garza. They're playing his walk-up music between innings. Willie Bully by Sam the Sham of the Pharaohs. Eduardo was tapping his feet to it. Maddie told Hattie about a thing she saw. What she saw was Saul Garza get red hot second half of the season. And a first pitch strike to the LSU catcher. You can wait to use that one. Wrote it down two weeks ago. He's hit safely in 11 of his last 12. And David Ewell says he committed on that one. Nothing in two. Quick pitch right there by Van Eyck. He's done that probably half a dozen times tonight. And, and every time it's an off speed pitch, too. It is, but he's thrown a changeup out of it, too. So, how do you combat that as a hitter? 
Well, you look at the patterns, and if you do the scouting report, I guarantee you it's not the first time that he's done it. And you look at how many times he's done it, throwing the off speed with the fastball, and you're ready for it. If you have a high leg kick, you minimize that kick, knowing he could have it. So we're gonna miss you at the breaking ball. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Van Eyck. We'll be back in Toronto for game five tomorrow with the Raptors looking for their first NBA title and the Warriors trying to force a game six. Our coverage starts with the NBA countdown at 8.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Last I heard, KD was gonna to practice today. Last you heard. Good sources. Yeah, Kerr keeps texting me. It's called the bottom line. Well, Woj bombs keep coming through. You know who's an Omaha guy that I didn't know until recently? Bob Gibson, Ryan Windhorse. Oh. NBA, NBA insider? No. I, I don't know. I just thought I'd throw that in. You're welcome. Not a member at your club, is it? I don't know. I'll look him up in the phone book next week. You guys still have phone books in Omaha? Yep. Let's get the internet next week. <laughs> Chris Reed late on 96, letter high, one and two. That fastball up really works with that curveball that he's been able to throw 12 6. Let alone the changeup. That's where I'd like to see him live with that fastball. I think the velocity plays up more. I and mean, he plays that curveball up like you just said. Reed pops this one out of play. It's the pitch that over the last five years we've seen now used so much more at the major league level than it was in years past earlier. I think it's because a lot more curveballs are being used at the major league yeah. level also. Remember Doc Gooden used to have it back in the 80s. Strike three call. Reed can't believe he got punched out. Three straight Ks now for Van Eyck. That's what will get you a take on this one. Is that elevated fastball, Reed had seen it twice, swung through one, fouled the other one off, and then this one, you probably read fastball. It's coming out of the same slot. It's that up and out of the zone. If it is a fastball, instead he drops it down. It looked like it caught just the top end of the zone. 14 of 17 first pitch strikes for Van Eyck, and that one just missed. And in order for that call to be called the strike you need the catcher to let the ball travel yes. that's exactly what Nelson did he allowed that baseball to travel caught it deep freshman catcher for Florida State that one he goes out and gets ball down goes out and gets this one right here doesn't extend just lets it travel a little bit a little bit more to give Tony Norris behind the plate a better look at it Broussard, the nine-hole hitter for LSU. And Nelson doing a fantastic job framing now. Sold that one to Morris. One and two. Stuck it. And there's those where they're borderline strikes like it was right there. If, if, if there's a move to bring it back. Like him as a receiver. Because you got to know the ones that you, that you want to try to sell and the others that you let go. Because if you try to sell them all. You, you're gonna you're gonna lose some confidence with the guy standing behind you. And he's had his tough days, but he's continued to battle through. Ten pass balls so far in the season. Had one yesterday, but he continues to grind. This one headed towards right field. Reese Albert catches up to it. A one-two-three frame for LSU. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Four-one Seminoles. This is the destination, TD Ameritrade Park, Omaha, Nebraska, side of the College World Series. As Super Regionals continue, eight teams will punch their tickets. So far, only Louisville has locked in their berth. What a performance by Kumar Rocker last night for Vanderbilt. First no-hitter in Super Regionals history. He struck out 18. 19. 19. 19. Like I said, 19. Yes. That was in all of them were on breaking balls. 19 nasty, strikeouts. It was, nasty slider. Oh, it, it was that was big league stuff right now by or last night by Rocker. If and they not, needed it. And if you're not familiar, his dad Tracy Rocker won the Outland Trophy. Great college football player. And now an assistant coach at the University of Tennessee. Here's Drew Mendoza. It's fun to watch mom though, pitch by pitch. Yeah, she was living and dying with yes. every throw. 
Vanderbilt has a knack for getting guys to say no to the pros and show up on campus. All the great programs do. And Rocker is one of those guys. I got another one coming in next year. Jack Leiter. Al Leiter's son. Supposed to, supposed to go high in the draft, and he told everyone, don't. I'm going to Vanderbilt. Don't waste your time. Number two national seed. They lead Duke 12 to 2 in the sixth inning. Still waiting out the weather delay there. Beck misses up and in on Mendoza. Let's see if it's true to pattern. Good curveball that Beck has in his back pocket. Elevates the fastball here 2 2 now. So he goes to that curveball. Same one he threw Albert. Sold out Alec Black Stadium in Baton Rouge. The payoff foul ball. Matthew Beck followed Landon Marceau, put in three and a third innings of work, and allowed four runs, two of them earned on eight hits. Beck struck out Reese Albert to end the inning. Misses up and away. Lead off the walk. Army Beck misses to Mendoza. For more coverage of the Division I Baseball Regionals and interactive brackets, head to NCAA.com. Here's Robbie Martin. They're checking the scores there, and they can't believe that they're still in the weather they're laying bandy. Tough task for Duke. You got to come back out. Only three at bats left, trailing by 10, and waiting out a lengthy weather delay. Here's a cleanup hitter, Robbie Martin, 0 for 1 with a fly out to left. And Becker climbs, uh, back pardon me, climbs the ladder on him, nothing to two. Pitches that have been just too good out over the plate after chasing on a pitch up. Looking over the Florida State dugout after that foul ball headed into the dugout. And they got one of the Florida State players. Attendant Jack Anderson in the Florida State dugout. Rolled over that one, picked up by Beloso, goes back to back, covering the bag. Mendoza advances on the fielder's choice. So taking Anderson back down the tunnel. Scary moment. <laughs> Here's J.C. Flowers. Center fielder and closer for this Florida State team. Flowers granted time by Tony Norris.
Flowers got the save last night, but he didn't have a great game at the plate. He was 0 for 4. Hit into a double play. He committed an error in center field. And LSU had him on the ropes in the ninth inning. They brought the winning run to the plate. Martin said it to you after the game. And I, I didn't realize it really until he said it. Flowers, even in that moment, looked very comfortable on the mound. When there was traffic, ball game on the line, and that's that's the heartbeat that you want from a closer. Seems like that would apply to that entire Florida State team, and the opposite of that to LSU. Looks like one team is playing relaxed and confident, and the other one's playing tight. Here's Duplantis. Out made. Mendoza will tag and go second and third. You guys seeing the same thing in terms of the overall team attitude? Yeah, it's become an un uh, from the Florida State Seminole side. It's become an unselfish attitude in that clubhouse and in that dugout. And one thing that they were conscious of yesterday was getting the 40 wins. There was a lot of pressure put on this team. I heard from a lot of players say, "We didn't want to be the only team that did not get to 40 wins." That was head coached by Mike Martin. That pressure has been taken off, and so far. Seems like they're playing for one goal in mind. That's to get back. Carter Smith looks at a curveball for a strike. It feels like there is an LSU counterpunch, though, that's that's going to come. It just it really this, does. In this ballpark, this setting, the history, it just feels like it's coming here pretty quick. But the guy on the mound. For Florida State has been really, really good. C.J. Van Eyck hasn't made too many mistakes tonight. Home fans haven't had much to cheer about today. The lone run came on an Antoine Duplantis home run. Just off the plate. Okay, so Eddie was talking about this earlier with that breaking ball that's up in the zone and as a catcher to try to let that travel as far as you possibly can. That's the one where, I mean, you almost have to catch it against your body. And watch Garza kind of goes out and gets that one. Instead of letting it travel. Yeah, you got to let it get as close to you as you can. And you just, you're just trying to play to the home plate umpire as to where that ball is received. The low curveball, you got to go get. The high curveball, you got to let it, let it travel as long as you can. Got the Satas on deck, 3-1 count. Not guaranteed to be a fastball here with the runner at third base. Breaking balls lifted to center. Zach Watson settles underneath it. They work around a leadoff walk. Anderson's back. He's got a helmet on he's got the catcher's gear on he's trying to protect himself yep that'll help all's good in fsu's world selection monday carried some drama for florida state one of the last four teams in and the legendary coach was able to kick back and let out a sigh of relief <laughs> Look at this. It all worked out for him. Tom Hart, Eduardo Perez, and Kyle Peterson. It kind of had the feeling. That they played pretty well at the ACC tournament. Just yeah. to get in, they had potential to make some noise. You didn't think they'd go quietly in the four years. You didn't think they'd go quietly in the last year. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if you thought that they'd, they'd go on the run that they have at this point. We'll see how far that it goes. Um, but that exhale is so telling. And we talked about it yesterday. 40th year that Mike Martin has been at Florida State. It's the first time in those 40 years they have not been a one or a two seed in the postseason. It's the only time they've had to watch that selection show and wonder whether or not their name would be called. And that being said, going and being sent five hours away, driving up to Athens, Georgia, I'm telling you this, there's a lot of Florida State fans that did not think that they would get out of that regional. Yeah, so a lot of them made that trip because they said, we want to be here. For Levin's final game. And right. those same people that made that trip to Athens 
it looks like they brought a few buddies with them here to Baton Rouge to experience this and to be here for their legendary head coach. Josh Smith bangs one up the middle. Uh, another leadoff hit for LSU. Their second in the last three innings against C.J. Van Eyck. The leader has spoken, guys, for the LSU Tigers. And you, KP, we were talking about this, about there's still a chance for LSU. Watch him look into the dugout after he gets that base hit. He wants to let everyone know this is not over. This is the box. When their backs are against the wall, the LSU Tiger players have played their best baseball. Their backs are against the wall. And now you get this place back in. Now you get them on their feet. And now the, the power of the box starts to come alive again. Giovanni De Giacomo shows Bond, takes a curveball up. De Giacomo is 0 for 2. Here comes the crowd. Josh Smith has 20 stolen bases in the season, fifth most in the SEC. He's got to shield his eyes to get the signs from Nolan Kane and to look in on the pitcher, Van Eyck. So DiGiacomo's in there for offense. Yesterday it was defense, Hal Hughes was in the lineup. DiGiacomo more offensive, can really run. But when he has seen that elevated fastball today, we saw it in his first at bat, he has not handled it. I, I, I would stay with that. Line drive, that'll get down. Smith motors past second and throws on the brakes. LSU's cooking here in the sixth. So the difference of the elevated fastball that you really want and the elevated fastball that gets hit is maybe six inches. Sometimes it's less than that. If this is six inches up, it's probably a different outcome. Instead, down enough that DiGiacomo can handle it. Here they come. When you talk about experience, Josh Smith, the base runner, he stops at second base. His run right now is not important. Why go to third when he knows the really good arm of J.C. Flowers in center field? Let the big boys come up, and Antoine DePontes with a home run already. This is what the top of the order of the LSU Tigers can do. Mike Martin to the mound. Antoine Duplantis is due up. He put a charge into one in the fourth, and he put a charge into one in Arkansas. About two thirds of the way through the SEC season, it turned LSU's year around. This was the fourth. Was it fair or was it foul? When we ran it back a bunch, I thought it was fair. Looking at it again, maybe it passed right in front of that line. I don't know. In the end, the umpires put the headsets on. They kept the fair call. That's the only run that LSU has so far. But this is the first time tonight that they, they've had the first two on in an inning. I guarantee you folks at home with the 60-inch uh, flat screens have a better look than we do on that one. <laughs> so Van Eyck faces some pressure. LSU had a moment. Nolan Kane grabbed the hitters, talked to him for a moment. And now DePlantis, he had 12 home runs in the season, steps in with two on and nobody out. Well, the senior, the all-time hits leader for LSU. This is the moment you want him up at the plate. Power took a huge leap here in his senior season. Fourth-year player from Lafayette, Louisiana. 12th round pick of the Mets last week. And a chance to get this crowd even louder. And this is where it can speed up also for Florida State in the infield. Any ground ball, you have to just try to get one out. Try to get two with the speed of the plants is at the plate. You're susceptible to a lot of errors. One of the worst defensive teams in the ACC this year. Two and oh.
popped it up but out of play. Duplantis had the chance to be the hero last night. Came to the plate representing the winning run, and he popped up to the catcher to end the game and give Florida State game one. This is fun, boys, watching this crowd. from Becker goes to third and LSU's rally is rolling now. And it's the little things in these games that I love watching the most and you, you got to see Mike Salvatore at shortstop right now because of the movement of the runners. So watch. Runners start to go. Salvatore breaks towards second. Now he's about uh, maybe five feet further than he would have been. I don't know if he gets to it anyway. But that movement right there, Smith thought he saw something. He was going early. DiGiacomo was playing follow the leader. Salvatore takes a few steps towards second. Duplantis uses the backside of the field, and here they really come. Mike Martin said he's never seen an environment like this in college baseball, and he's been doing this his entire life. And neither have any of his players. And no one warming up in the bullpen for Florida State. It's Van Knight's game right now in the top of the six. No outs. 12 home runs coming up to hit. This is Daniel Cabrera. 0 for 2 today, a couple of ground outs. Look at the first pitch last time. And a first pitch breaking ball in for a strike. Up. The hips went flying, the hand stayed back. Geared for the fastball. That's what I love about this game. Got a freshman. Now here, you have a sophomore. You've already had a junior, a senior up at the plate. Okay, in this type of environment, you know how to slow the game down. C.J. Van Eyck played for the U.S. national team last year for Paul Maneri in the course of the summer. Maneri knows both Van Eyck and Drew Parrish. Yesterday started for Florida State very well. And he's watched Van Eyck control this game for the first five innings and got to him here in the sixth. Pulled to the right side behind the bag Smith. And Van Eyck covers it, but it's a productive out. And out of time run, stands at second base. Great job, great piece of hitting. When you have two strikes, you're able to move the runners 90 feet closer. Time run now at second base. Base hit ties this thing, and the box will even get louder. This is junior Zach Watson, third round pick of the Orioles last week. Hitting 404 with runners in scoring position. The SEC average is 291. One and oh. Watson was in the two hole yesterday, went one for four. Pulmonary moved him down to the five spot for tonight. Laid off another one, two and oh. That's a pretty good pitch there. And that's the one that Nelson did go out and get. The hardest thing about a curveball sometimes is getting it called for a strike, especially if it's a really good one. Because so often when the catcher catches it, it's down and out of the zone like it was right there. I thought that caught the bottom of the zone. Just foul, 2 and 1 now. What a pitch. Went off speed there on a 2-0 pitch. Eddie, that's his equalizer. Yeah. The ability to throw that changeup 
in a spot to where you, you feel like you get a dial up for mid 90s. Snap throw to third. Got him! A pick up by the freshman Matthew Nelson. That can't happen. And again, we talk about trying to do a little too much. Your run does not matter. You talk about deflating the box here. Takes too big of a lead at third. Nelson, a called play. Mendoza, heads up. He's there. A perfect thrill. The freshman catcher picking off. The freshman young DH at third. Now three and one to Zach Watson, and it turns into ball four. So Matthew Nelson yesterday said he couldn't even hear the umpire behind him because of the crowd. He just silenced the crowd with the pickoff of DiGiacomo. This could come from Mendoza, this could come from Nelson, this could come from Mike Martin Jr. on the bench, but it was timed so perfectly because it wasn't even really a secondary. I mean, he was running towards home plate, so all the momentum is on that right foot too far off snap throw right behind the runner that's that's the play of the game so far that's fearless also by that yes. freshman behind the plate this is the players i don't see this being mike martin jr at all i think it has to do with mendoza seeing something nelson being alert looking at mendoza as loud as this place is to make that call nothing in one to Cade beloso he's over one of the strikeout And this one's lifted to center. Should end the inning. Flowers coming in. Becker is there. It'll be the center fielder, J.C. Flowers. The pickoff changed everything. LSU got three straight hits. He only had one run to show for it at the end. About this second, third, one out to freshman to Giacomo. Not in the starting lineup in there yesterday. In today, but the freshman Nelson picks it for a giant out. All right, Kevin, thanks. Back here in Baton Rouge, where the crowd has been silenced by a pickoff from the freshman catcher, Matthew Nelson. And Florida State's J.C. Flowers will lead off the sixth inning. Remember, Florida State is the designated home team here in game number two of the Super Regional. That one rocketed off of Saul Garza. This was the reaction, Nelson. Getting the hug from C.J. Van Eyck after the pickoff. And you want to talk about something that gives you an adrenaline rush on the mound. You've got second, third, one out. You get a guy picked off like that. There's, there's a new gear that shows up right away. The Senes with Carmi at the plate tried to bunt his way on. Yeah, it's got to take all the weight of the world off your shoulders. So relaxed Florida State team for the most part before every game they get together in front of the dugout and play hacky set. Again another two strike curveball where Garza wanted that pitch in the dirt stays up for back. That's how good it is with the spin that Florida State has yet been able to barrel it. Those mistakes though cannot happen. Andrew DeSedas is 0 for 2 today. And make it 0 for 3 as Beck gets his second strikeout. We'll have the second game of the Subway Series between the Mets and the Yankees Tuesday at 7 Eastern from the Bronx. You can always watch it on the ESPN app from anywhere, and you'll be there. I'll be there. So I'll be there on Tuesday, and a couple of these young fellows, they'll have an opportunity of being there in the near future. So will Pete Alonzo, the former Florida yeah. standout. Smith went to the Yankees. Duplantis went to the Mets in the draft last week. Well, here's the hero of the moment, Matthew Nelson. Here's a little laid back week here. Here, York. Laid back. We got the game on Thursday. Oh, 
A lot of traveling. I've been in Omaha for a few weeks. Maybe this year I'll make it to Kyle's house. Ooh, Nelson gets play. Don't go for the stakes. Tim Becker to the plate now. Stop. What is it? Stop. Not even Stop. rare? Stop. <laughs> Charred a little bit. Just Hart wants to stake well, well. You know, that's, that's, that's the most un-American thing in the world. That's not true. Just stop. Fair warning. When the chef's hat is crooked, you might want to look over his shoulder. Paul Maneri's going to the bullpen. Matthew Beck was effective in relief. And it's a bullpen that got taxed yesterday when Cole Henry, the starter, only went two innings. Cole Henry is okay. He went in for an MRI on that forearm today. Beck's day is done. LSU's back against the wall. And how about this nugget? The last three teams to eliminate LSU have gone on to win the College World Series. If that's the case, and Florida State eliminates LSU either tonight or tomorrow, it would be Florida State's first national championship in baseball. Tim Becker at the plate. Devin Fontenot is the new LSU pitcher. Fontenot comes in blowing cheese. Becker has his finance degree. He's got his MBA. And he's got more baseball left in him. Yeah, he's got a job lined up after mm -hmm. this. A little pressure with these out -pats. By the way, Kyle, my Twitter is blowing up, saying that that ball that Francis hit was foul. They have 70 inch screen TVs, we don't. No, and the cool thing is you can always believe Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and use that as a legitimate source here. <laughs> Hold on. Let me check Wikipedia and see if that's true. I had a Miami Hurricane fan say it was fair, too. A foul also. So. All right. When a Kane says it's foul, they said look in front of the end. They said the ball, you can clearly see it in front of the end. That's what they're saying. I think they have a point. There it is right there in front of the end. Look at the bottom half. There it is. You see it? Oh, yes. You know what? I think they're right. They're right. one nothing Twitter. That was off of Antoine Duplantis' bat in the fourth. Chin up, chin up. You know, you know the old, <laughs> like, if you say it like you think it's right, it's right? Yeah, just say it with gravitas. <laughs> kind of rolled with it that time. You had me apologizing to I you. I did, and I accepted it. <laughs> and I still do. Nelson getting a word from Tyler Holt. It, he and Beloso peering into the setting sun. This is where, you, honestly, you need to be careful on the mound. And you have to be aware that your first baseman can't see it very well. Because if it's a high throw over there, it's not easy for Beloso to handle at all. Becker goes down swinging. Two down. They'll hang another K. From in front of the sun and past the sun and into K. Beloso's eyes. Section B made it. May have heard O Canada in the middle of the game. That was them. This one's hit well to left field. Daniel Cabrera in the shadows has room. And that'll close the Florida State half of the six. It's getting late here in Baton Rouge. We go to the seventh two run game. Well, Florida State has been a much aligned defensive team all season long, but in the postseason, just like their offense, they've stepped their game up. They have, and they've been able to bail them out so far this afternoon. First, it was a double play, the, the unassisted three to six right there. One play that Florida State has not done much, and this one, the pickoff, the third base. Yes, you end up getting Mendoza with the tag. Big play by the freshman Nelson. As Florida State has been able to be bailed out by their defense, a defense that has needed help the entire season. And 15 errors total from the first baseman. Four weeks ago, 
Mike Martin Jr. told his first baseman, if you make the play first, do not throw it to another bag. Mr. Smith did not pay attention through that one the second and was able to get the double play. Twelfth in the ACC in fielding percentage. Thirteenth in errors. They've committed 81 errors this season. But they've been strong in the postseason. Here's Saul Garza. One for two today. Garza from Edinburgh, Texas, by way of Howard Junior College. Texan was taken in the 32nd round by the Royals last week. Drafted by the Cardinals coming out of high school. Undrafted after a monster year at junior college. Hit 23 home runs. C.J. Van Eyck sitting at 89 pitches. It's another one of those nights where he's had all three. There's not too many times you go out there and you've got all three. Van Eyck has all three tonight on all three of plus pitches. To third, Mendoza took it the knees. One down. Sports Center after Sunday Night Baseball with Bucci and Kenny. They'll have reports from the Raptors and Warriors on the eve of Game 5. Plus, Steve Levy and Barry Melrose are in the loo with Game 6 post-game reactions and analysis. And our latest SC feature is the inspirational story about a high school quarterback's recovery from injury, included Drew Brees. Sports Center after Cardinals Cubs on ESPN and the ESPN app. Here's Chris Reed at the plate. Reed is 0 for 2. Seven times this season, C.J. Van Eyck has thrown 100 pitchers or more. That's over 16 starts. And Van Eyck sitting at 95 on pitch number 94. I think we're still feeling okay. It's borderline. It's at the bottom part of the zone if it's there. But for Van Eyck, the stuff, the stuff has not gone down as the pitch count has gone up today. Reed to the right side. Carter Smith has it. Let's get you back to Chris Connor in the studio. All right, apologies, Kevin Connors, not Chris Cotter. He's a few gym days away from being Cotter, though. Drama all over the place in college baseball. We'll be in Omaha next week, but I hope you folks watching at home today, whether you're watching here or you're watching Lubbock or what you're seeing in Starkville, Mississippi tonight, have a great appreciation for the local fan bases, the ballparks, and the support because there's nothing like the color and pageantry of college baseball on campus. I thought it was so telling just to see Mike Martin's reaction to this place. And for all of the different places that he's played, last year he had a Florida State-Boston College game at Fenway Park. It was the first game that he had ever he had ever had in a, in a big league ballpark. And he, we, we were talking that day about it. And that's for all of the things that he's seen. Um, it's, it, it was cool to hear his reaction and seeing this place for the first time. Brant Broussard tips it off with the catcher, Nelson. And we've run into a lot of Florida State fans over the last couple of days who appreciate this. 
Here's Mike Martin entering the ballpark yesterday. You're right, Colonel. You're exactly right. I'm honored to be in this place. It's the classiest, classiest thing I've ever seen in my whole career. You hear Mike Martin right there say Colonel. He calls Chip Baker, which has been alongside him for many years here at Florida State. Pretty much runs the behind the scenes program. He used to be the third base coach for the Knowles when I played for Florida State. He's the man behind the success, you could pretty much say. Three and two and out of Brent Broussard. To short, Salvatore handles the hot hop, and Florida State is just six outs away from returning to Omaha. Game number two of this Super Regional, Antoine Duplantis with a solo home run, but LSU just one for four with runners in scoring position. The rally fell apart in the sixth, and they got picked off of third. C.J. Van Eyck has been magnificent for Florida State. Matthew Nelson with the glove and with the bat, he's two for two with an RBI, and he had that big pickoff of DiGiacomo in the sixth. Reese Albert, 0 for 3, three strikeouts. It's Devin Fontenot on the mound. Second inning of work for Fontenot. Albert gave him some breathing room with a home run in the ninth inning last night, underway to a 6 to 4 win. And another run here in the seventh would be a monster add on for Florida State. He looks at 92, 2 and 1. I think he was taken all the way there. was welcome to the game by the folks in right field in the first inning. And with Florida State up by two, he might get the last laugh. It says 93 on the on the on the speed gun, but that effective velocity is playing a little bit faster than that. You can tell there's a lot more zip on the fastball this afternoon than it was yesterday for Fontenot. What do you mean by effective velocity? It might say 93 up there, but it just plays a little bit faster. Hides the ball a little bit better. It's a little bit more zip, a little bit more spin rate. Extension out in front. Chopper. Broussard. One down. You ever had a hitter, you ever see velocity on the scoreboard and go shake your head and go, there's no way that was only 92. Absolutely. Uh, every day. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and there's some guys that you can't figure out and you're like, really? That says 87 or it says 89? But it plays like it's 93. It's because where the release point is out in front, the way they hide the baseball, and the way they are able to just downhill plane that. Here's Drew Mendoza. Six five two thirty, junior from Mineola, Florida. Third round pick of the Nationals last week. Mendoza's freshman year, he missed most of the fall after breaking his jaw in a failed pickoff attempt. So they suffered a broken jaw. They reset it. It wasn't reset right. They had to break it again, and that's how he came to eat his meals through a straw for a few weeks. 
chases a curveball in the dirt. I should think about doing that for a few weeks. <laughs> I don't, I, don't think, I don't think a straw is going to fix your problems. <laughs> Big league body for Mendoza. And he looks at strike three. Fontenot trying to give LSU some energy. With his second strike out of the night. He has, and they needed it, too. They needed a bullpen to step up tonight. It was a bullpen that is depleted because of what they had to go through last night. And Fontenot looks very different than he did last night. I mean, the, there's more carry on the fastball. There's more conviction in everything that he's let go. And, and you can see after that, he's he's feeling it right now. And this is the Devin Fontenot that can go out and dominate one time through a lineup. This is Robbie Martin looking for his first hit tonight. Wow. Electric. It is. It's playing up. And the, and the beauty of it is the fans understand and they know that the top of the order is up for the Tigers next inning. Ninety three again. It'll be interesting to see if CJ Van Eyck comes back out for the eighth. Smith, the Giacomo and Duplantis are due up. And the fans are up again. The 0-2 to Robbie Martin. Well hit straightaway center. Big ballpark. Watson in the shadows for out number three. Devin Fontenot has given LSU some momentum. Can the hitters take advantage? Top of the order due up. Down two as we head to the eighth. LSU's home ballpark, but the Tigers are the visiting team today. They trail Florida State 4 to 2 as we go to the top of the eighth inning. Seminoles need six outs to advance to Omaha. LSU needs a comeback to force a game three tomorrow. Tom Hart, Eduardo Perez, Cal Peterson, our fantastic ESPN crew, and a crowd of nearly 12,000 packed into the ballpark tonight. Number 11, Mike Martin. Final few games as Florida State's head coach. He will retire as soon as the season is complete, whether that's here or in Omaha. And Josh Smith, second round pick of the Yankees at the plate, quickly falls behind in the count, nothing and two to CJ Van Eyck. You guys surprised that Van Eyck's back out there? No. This is your horse. This is your ace. You know that there's four left handed hitters coming up, but this is the guy that's gotten you there so far tonight. This is tiny quick pitches on a fastball. Quick pitch 96. How about that? Josh Smith has to cover now the outer part of the plate because of the last call that he had on strike two. Two and two. Josh Smith was in the building 2015. Baton Rouge Super Regional. Chris Giambra's walk off home run it was one of the best games they've seen here in this ballpark. He was here as a high school student. He knows the power of the crowd in this ballpark. And he taps one foul. His curveball may be the best that it's been in the entire game right now. Back to back back door breaking balls to get ahead 0-2. That one Smith just got a piece of to stay alive. Breaking ball hit the opposite way. Josh Smith with the leadoff double. It gets all the way into the bullpen in trouble for Becker. And the tying run will come to the plate in the eighth. What a piece of hitting by Josh Smith. I mean, think about all the things that are going through his head. The best leadoff hitter leading off an inning came into the series hitting 452 leading off an inning. Takes the curveball, goes the other way with it. Gets on base, not only got into scoring position, possibly being his last at bat as a Tiger. Making sure it's not. What a piece of hitting. Becker had an issue in left field. 
He'll get a visit from the trainer. Did he cut his hand digging for that ball behind the bench? Yeah, he may have. He got into the morning track pretty good. Met some new friends over there, too. Well, good luck throwing with that thing on your hand. He was a finger. You're good. Remember, that's a rubber sole, so he burned it. Yeah. Turf behind the plate, up the lines, and a rubber warning track surface. Grass field. Again, two lefties warming up for Florida State. Paul Maneri struggled with this decision. What do I do late in the game in a pinch hit situation? Do I leave Giovanni De Giacomo in the game? He said it depends. And if I need a big hit or just somebody to need to move a runner over or a sacrifice, I might stick with him. But he really only has two options off the bench for pinch hitters. Bianco and Willis. Nothing in two to the freshman De Giacomo. Well, there's someone that wants to redeem himself from what happened with the pickoff play at third base. It's Giovanni right now. Caught just a piece of it to stay alive. C.J. Van Eyck's season high in pitches is 113. That was in a game at Virginia back on April 20th. Oh, it's hard not to fall in love with this environment. Late on the fastball up, one down. That's a really good sequence from C.J. Van Eyck. So the breaking ball down that DiGiacomo just got a piece of, and then he still has 95 in the tank. Elevates that fastball up and out of the zone, and once those hands start, there's nothing DiGiacomo can do to make any contact with that big strikeout right there for Van Eyck. Antoine Duplantis has done everything he can to extend LSU season. He is two for three tonight. Controversial home run down the line in the fourth inning. Opposite field RBI single in the eighth. They're up two right now. Salvatore, I would not even pay attention to Smith. The plant is, handles the bat well. We already saw what he did last time. 2 0. Yeah, he hit it at the spot that Salvatore had vacated when he was coming in behind Smith that time. And that swing that DePlantis took last time is, is who he was earlier in his career. I mean, he, he was backside liner, backside liner, has learned to spin on the ball a little bit more this year. It's a new career high for C.J. Van Eyck, 114 pitches. Florida State wins, they go to Omaha. LSU comes from behind to force a game three if they can find a win. In the air to left, long run, Becker towards the line. It'll drop. Smith will be waved home. Becker's throw is off the mark, and taking second is Duplantis. It's a one-run game in the eighth. He just got the hand taped. After sliding across the warning track. How fitting. Antoine Duplantis, all-time hits leader at LSU, gets on base again. But right here, throw the ball to second base. You throw it home. That does not help you at all. Now you put the, the tying run at second base instead of keeping him at first. Throw goes to third. Antoine Duplantis. 
a complete player for LSU, continues to go to second base, and the box is lit up. Mike Martin with a visit to the mound. A chat with C.J. Van Eyck. A career high 115 pitches. He's got left-hander Daniel Cabrera do up. And that'll be it for Van Eyck. What a fantastic outing for Florida State starter. But they're going to the bullpen for the first time. Antonio Velez will enter. They play Colin Baton Rouge here, and now it gets really rowdy. They turn it over to the bullpen. Here's a look at the bracket under the lights now at the box. UCLA, Michigan, the final. UCLA, the number one national seed. And then Arkansas and Ole Miss will meet tomorrow. Ole Miss has hit more home runs than anyone else in this year's NCAA tournament. Yeah, they went to work early today. Cole Zabowski, three run home run. Cooper Johnson went deep in the first. Ole Miss kept the pedal down the whole time. On the other side, we've got one through. Louisville, the first and now only team to advance to Omaha. Vandy, Duke. Vandy up late in that one, still under a weather delay. Game two, Stanford and State tonight on the U. North Carolina, Auburn. The Tar Heels even that one up today. They have resumed in Nashville, 12-2 Vandy leading Duke in the bottom of the seventh, trying to put the finishing touches on that one after Duke took game one. So Antonio Velez yesterday, junior from Brandon, Florida, bridged the gap to get it to their closer, J.C. Flowers. He worked a scoreless seven. Four and two with an ERA of 4 7 six. Bella is in here, but you, you've got to tip your cap to the job that C.J. Van Eyck did today. Works deep into this ball game. Now Florida State with a fairly rested bullpen. You don't know whether or not Flowers can come in, but they don't have to go to that pen until one out here in the eighth inning. Here's Daniel Cabrera, 0 for 3 today. Cabrera faced Velez yesterday, grounded out to third to end the seventh. Tough to improve on that stat. Flowers threw 30 pitches over two innings yesterday. Would he even be available for Florida State tonight? I would not be surprised to see him in the ninth inning. If they have the lead. If they have the lead. Not as a tie, but if they have the lead, I would not be surprised. He's also the starting center fielder. Up the middle. They're playing the shift to set us long run. Has no play. Runners in the corners with one down in a one-run game. He said us was playing almost halfway to first. There's a feeling on the mound when you get a swing like this and you automatically think it's an out because you make the pitch, you get the approach that you get from Cabrera right here. Sometimes what you don't know is defensively what you've done. This time the shift on and there is nothing that DeSantis can do with that. Cabrera just put it in a place to where nobody could make a play. Mike Martin cannot allow Velas to pitch to Zach Watson. We're waiting for the signs. Mike Martin is waiting to see what he's going to do. Well, he sent Chase Haney down, and you would think he sent him down for this spot right now. Now, Watson can fly, but Haney's a guy that can get you a bunch of ground balls. It's a really good sinker from a low arm angle. I'd like a sinker from a low arm angle right now just to see if there's a chance you can get two with one pitch. He's staying with Velas. Zach Watson is 0 for 2. Rick to third, off the glove of Mendoza, and we are tied. Headed to third, Cabrera, safe. Headed to second, Watson. Can't do it. Can't happen. Out Just at the bag. That cannot happen. 
It happened yesterday, and, and Watson's so aggressive, but, man, does that change the course of this inning. He's immediately asking for Palmineri to come out and take a look, which I think you have to in this case. But that's where sometimes even, – Even if he's called safe, that cannot happen. No, it cannot. And it, Palmineri it cannot. knows it. Hands on the hips. That's two straight nights that Watson's run into outs. And the aggressiveness you love in general, but there's there's times to take a chance, and that's not one of them. Does his job to start, hits it right on the button, and Mendoza can't make the play, so you know that the run's going to score. You know we've got a tie ball game. I love the base running of Cabrera going first to third when that ball got far enough away. And that's the second time in this inning that Becker throws the ball where he's not supposed to. He's safe. He might be safe right there, too. I think he may be, too. It was, he pulled the old disappearing act with the left hand. And again, even if he's called safe, it's just a big mistake. One on the throw, and two on going right there. You cannot risk it, especially with the go-ahead run at third base. Watch his left hand. Watch his left hand, and that's where DeSantis goes to make the tag, and the left hand disappears. The I think right he's one safe. Time. I think he's safe. I think he's safe. You guys might be right, but I don't know if there's enough to overturn this. I think there is. They should take their time right now to make sure this is a big part to continue the season for LSU. Now, listen, I mean, that's a mistake to take that chance, but that is a big-time slide. Oh, it is. That is a big time slide because when that left arm disappeared, that's where DeSantis went to make the tag, and it looked like he had to reach up and ultimately tag him on the sternum. And if that's where he got him first, I think the right hand's in. I think he's safe, guys. And the other thing, DeSantis didn't hold the tag. Correct. If DeSantis holds the tag, Watson went past the bag. At that point, he is going to be out. He's safe. You're, the instinct as an infielder is you can't hold the tag there the because base you have line. a runner at third I base. It. I get it. There's no one else there. I tell you, yes, stay on the tag. He's safe. LSU ran into two outs on the bases yesterday. They had a runner picked off third to kill a rally today. And now this would be the second out of the eighth inning. LSU needs to win this game to keep their season alive and force a deciding game three tomorrow night. Emotional turnaround also for the Florida State players with what LSU has been able to do here. The top of the order again has prevailed. Here's the call. Wow. I'm shocked. I, I disagree. I, 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 I agree with your shock. I disagree with the call. I, disagree I thought he was safe. Also. Most likely, they'll say inconclusive with what you had said, Tom. Yeah. If this were Omaha and there were 40 cameras, it might have been over here. <laughs> so here's Kane Beloso. After the out, LSU will try to reclaim the momentum, but they have tied it. They're the visiting team. This is the top of the eight. A lot of pressure right now on Nelson. Keep the ball in front of you. As Velas will throw that slider down and away in the dirt. Daniel Cabrera went first to third on the RBI single from Watson. Good block right there. Again, Cabrera has to be on his toes at third base anticipating that. LSU won a game in the SEC tournament on a wild pitch. They actually scored two runs on one wild pitch in a game against Auburn. The 2-0. Tap to third, Mendoza takes his time. We are tied at four now, headed to the bottom of the eighth inning. Alec Box Stadium in Baton Rouge in game number two of the Super Regional. That's been an amazing contest there. Six ties and four knee changes in the last two games in Lubbock. Here, 
Sun setting in Baton Rouge is it setting on LSU season. Well, two runs in the eighth, tied it up at four, as we look for a second come from behind victory in as many games here in Baton Rouge. Final season for head coach Mike Martin, the winningest coach in NCAA history, no matter the sport. And he needs one win to return to Omaha. Devin Fontenot out of the LSU bullpen has retired all five batters he's faced. He's done it with that electric fastball. 20 pitches, 15 strikes from Fontenot. J.C. Flowers singled and scored a run in the second. Who's got the advantage now? Right now, mm -hmm. Florida State because they've got six outs to play with. But aside from that, I, I don't know that anybody does. Tony Norris drawing the attention of the LSU faithful. This looked like it was out. Yeah. Not love though in the Baton Rouge. Anywhere in the state of Louisiana. Right back to it. Oh, he's left. The Fontenot has been absolutely nasty. And you can tell by the energy that he has on the mound. The fastball has been electric. The curveball has been dynamic. Flowers not happy. Remember, he's Florida State's closer. Still may see him on the mound in this one. Here's Carter Smith. First pitch fastball over the black. Nothing in one. Smith asked Tony Norris if it was in there. Smith singled and scored in the second. That was part of a 3-1 frame for Florida State. They led this game 3 zip and 4 to 1 before LSU came back to tie it. Defensive swing, nothing to two. I'd like to see Fontenot use that one a little bit more too because that fastball, the velocity is playing up and it has it has a lot of ride tonight. Mike Martin's going to use an offensive timeout to talk with Carter Smith and maybe like what we saw Duke try to do last night is break the rhythm and routine. And we saw it didn't work. No. Well, we could, nothing was going to stop Kumar Rocker last night. I want to know what he's telling him right now, Luke, too. Because right now you're in survival mode against what Fontenot is putting up out there. A lot of energy right now from Devin. So was that a message or just gamesmanship? Yes. <laughs> Florida State trailed game one, four nothing after five innings. They won six to four. LSU here in game two trailed 4 1 after five innings. We're at the break of all around his foot right now. Sure fastball, 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 fastball. Don't make it too hittable in two. Punched out flowers on the breaking ball. Every inch matters now. I think Tony Norris had a really good zone. Is that past tense or present? No, I, I think the entire evening he's had a really good zone, and that, that pitch was off the plate. Flinched at it. Wasn't a called strike. They say he didn't swing either. Try right here to try to back door that breaking ball. And right call. Smith drives it to center. Watson on the run. This park plays huge to straightaway center field. Tough to get one out, and there's two down. Devin Fontenot has been magnificent out of the pen. 
Well, it's also one of the reasons why every year Paul Maneri has two or three guys in the outfield that can absolutely fly. Watson can fly. DePlantis can fly. Cabrera's a good defensive left fielder. You can put DiGiacomo in the outfield, and you've got three guys that can move. This place, for many years, they talk about how many home runs LSU hit. That was the old place. This one on a night like tonight, it may play small to right, but besides that, it, it is a fair and, and a big ballpark to center. Nander DeSantis at the plate for Florida State. He's 0 for 3. You can't fall asleep with DeSantis. He does have power. Four home runs on the year. I saw him hit one in Gainesville. He catches one out in front. He has to continue to make pitches. Reed playing on the grass at third. A whiff on the fastball, one and one. Peek ahead of the LSU ninth. We'll have the bottom third of the order do up. Garza, Reed, and Broussard. Has to stay with that fastball. I think he gets him, he beats him with the fastball the way it's, how electric as it's been. Since he's been in tonight. The 2-1. Like that one? Like that one. Stay right there. Give your offense a chance in the top half. On their feet at the box. count now and this is key because this also affects who's going to come to the plate in the ninth for Florida State the payoff from Fontenot and to say us battling Collected his thoughts on the back of the mound. Now ready to go again. He's seen it. three consecutive fastballs where he's fouled them off. He's starting to catch up to it. Has to be very careful right here that one of those fastballs does not leak on the inside part of the plate for the Sanders with the wind blowing out to right. Biggest at bat last night's game was an 11 pitch at bat by Reese Albert in the seventh inning. It ended with a three run home run for the Florida State right fielder. It was a 6 4 FSU win in game one. Again, the 3 2 pitch to Nando de Santos. And again, he fouls it off. What are you thinking as a pitcher? You get mad. You get mad when you make your pitch and the guy spoils it in the spot like that. Now it's more and more and more. For Fontenot right now, it seems like we're just, we're, we're going to stay with the old number one right now because I think we can get him. But I'm with Eddie. Um, he's seen a lot of them right now. If you can throw a breaking ball over for a strike, I think you've got him here. Fontenot delivers again. Get him! We head to the ninth. Kevin, Kurt Wilson went into that game with four home runs in 74 career games. Wreck them. <laughs> Wreck them. <laughs> Guns that, up. That, that ballpark uh, and, and just the offensive approach that Texas Tech has. Josh Young has had a massive super. Moved from third base to shortstop this year, heard his name called in the top ten picks 
Rangers took him in the first round earlier this week. He's gone deep twice tonight, and the Raiders just keep coming back. What a showdown with the wind blowing out of Dan Law Field. Winner of that one goes to Omaha. Should Florida State win this one, they'll go back to the College World Series. But they have to get through this LSU lineup, and 11,713 packed in to the ballpark. Saul Garza singled in the first. He's one for three. We're going with the matchups here. Garza hits right-handed pitchers better than left-handed pitchers. Came into the series 377 against righties. That one off the thumbs, down the line, and just past the reach of Carter Smith. Swing and a miss for Garza. Ball dropped by Nelson. We'll have to finish it off with a throw to first. First strikeout for Antonio Velez for Florida State. And Chris Reed coming up. Velez could give you a little length in this bullpen, too. And, and this feels like a kid that you could turn into a starter pretty quick, too. I like his stuff. You see a lot of sliders. Left on left here, and Reed looks at a strike. And Chris Reed quickly down, nothing and two. Chris Reed, a senior from Baton Rouge out of St. Michael High School. Grandpa, an LSU professor. Cousins attended LSU. Family members have gone to school here. And he goes down swinging in the ninth. Two down. It'll be eight, nine, and one due up for Florida State in the last of the ninth. Nelson, the postseason hero, Becker, and then Salvatore. And if anyone reaches, they'll get to last night's hero, Reese Albert. This is Brant Broussard. And Broussard looks at a first pitch strike. Beckers ready to go. Fly ball to shallow right. Albert takes care of it. It's a one, two, three frame worked by Velez. He's fired up. Florida State comes to the plate with a chance to win it. And send Mike Martin back to Omaha. Here we go. Home half of the ninth inning for Florida State. Looking for a walk-off winner against the number 13 national seed, LSU, and trying to send their head coach back to the promised land in his final season at the helm of Florida State. He has more wins than any other coach in any sport in NCAA history. He's won at least 40 every season, including this one. They got their 40th win yesterday. And should they find a way to win this one, it'll be his 17th College World Series appearance. Tom Hart. Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, they're doing the war chant in the stands. Florida State faithful among the 11,700 in the ballpark tonight. That's why we showed up down here. Didn't know what was going to happen, but you knew it wasn't going to be boring. And, and this one has been an absolute blast to watch unfold. Huge game for the freshman catcher, Matthew Nelson. 
Had a great chat with him before the game. Talked to him about his number, 63. He said, I don't know where all these stories come from. I wear 63 because I want to be different. He's been different tonight. He has stood out at the plate and behind the plate. Guys, my concern with Fontenot is all the energy that was used to finish up last inning. We saw, we saw, we saw the passion. Now he's got to tame it down, focus again, and make pitches. This is the bottom half of the order. He needs to get these two outs. Found the edge there for a strike, two and one. They then got short hopped on the throwback. This was what Eddie was talking about. Talking about the end of that eighth inning. You see it often where pitchers use up all that they have left for one inning to give their offense a boost. Fontenot's gone as many as 60 pitches this year. 16 last night on a third of an inning. He has retired all eight batters he's faced. Oh my goodness, that one almost got him in the chin. <laughs> How about Nelson's reaction? Nervous energy in the ballpark now. The 3 1. Up. Did he go? No. And a leadoff walk. Matthew Nelson becomes the first base runner for Devin Fontenot. We're both looking in the dugout right now to see if Mike Martin goes with a pinch runner or not. You have a catcher that's been calling a very good game back there. That energy that he's had behind the plate. Mike Martin is going to go with it. Now he's going to ask Becker, which attempted to butt earlier in the game and was unsuccessful to do so. Tim Becker, the walk-on, graduate, looks at a first pitch fastball for a strike. Corners are in. Lee the third playing close, and all of a sudden Becker did not show butt, and Mike Martin saw the Bunt attempt the first time and he realized one thing. This kid might not know how to bunt. Come on, man. He, he, was, he was a star of the club team. He's not going to bunt on that team. <laughs> he had five hundreds in our offense. And he was the coach. That's right. Yeah, you're not going to put a bunt on yourself. But Nothing at two. Thing is, so far, Becker has not looked good against Fontenot's fastball. We saw it in the previous at that he got beat. Fontenot elevates that fastball just a few inches, most likely will beat. Becker on it. Four walk-off wins for Florida State this season. The most recent coming March 30th against Boston College. Their closer, Zach Hess, getting loose in the LSU pen. Can Becker be a hero again? I'm, I'm shocked that Mike Martin did not butt in this situation. I mean, it's not Tim Becker, then you pinch hit for him, you get somebody that can butt. Put the runner in at second base with the top of the order coming up to the plate. He's going with a hot hand in Becker with what he did in Athens, what he's done yesterday and earlier today with the base hit. Becker drove in a run with a double back in the fourth. LSU an average defensive team, middle of the pack in the SEC in double plays. The view of a legend. Seems like he's stressed more over which way a cut would break. Nelson fake going. Becker swings through it. Strike at number five in relief for front no. Love the location of the fastball. To go to break a ball off the plate and with Becker, who it seemed to be was having a hard time with velocity, was having a hard time catching up. If it's fastball away, it's a little bit easier to get a piece of that bat to it. Instead, brought him with a fastball in. Big strikeout right there for Fontenot. 
So back to the top of the order in the short sub, Mike Salvatore. Two on the gun and that fastball. Salvador has come up with some big hits during the season for the Florida State Seminoles. Senior leader in a ninth round pick of the Mariners. His coach absolutely loves him. Like Martin said, he'd compare his work ethic to Buster Posey's or Hall of Famer Jeremy Morris's. And so the senior from Ewing, New Jersey, has a chance to be a difference maker here. Runner goes, throw to second, he's in time! And in slide! Put him around. Mike Martin put on the hit and run, and Salvatore missed it. Swung, and swung through it. Remember, the offense comes from Mike Martin Jr. The offensive calls does. Hit and run, you're thinking a contact hitter like Salvatore. No chance for Nelson to even slide through that. Sal Garza not known for his arm. That's only the fourth base runner he's thrown out all season. Now the one-two to Salvatore. Big play with the top of the order coming up for LSU. Yes. You feel the energy right now here at the box. The two-two. Just off the plate. Tony Norris has heard it from this crowd the entire night, and I, I think he has been outstanding. Garza has to bring that glove back. If you see a catcher bring the glove back, that's because where they caught it is off the plate. And I give him a lot of credit because you will see some umpires in an environment like this get caught up in the emotion of the ball game. He's been really good all night. Fontenot's 3-2. It's ball four low. And that brings up yesterday's star, the confident Reese Albert. An 11 pitch at bat ended with this. A three-run home run, a casual bat flip, and a Florida State lead. He hit it off the building behind the bleachers and then came up late, added an insurance run into the first row. He's got to be hunting first pitch fastball right here, Dennis. You've got to be careful with the first pitch. seen him already once today. Advantage could be Reese Albert. Fontenot looks gassed. Albert grounded out to start the seven. Started his night with three strikeouts. Wow. Trying to see how he got way under that one. Fontenot's been beating him up. Sunset in the Bayou, tied at four in the ninth. Oh, got some performance by Fontenot. You talked with his shoulder injury, how you want to go away, away from him. I haven't seen LSU do much of it. No, they've been, they, they continue to go in. They continue to use power against Albert. The fans know who's up. They know the situation. And again, yeah, and you could see that was a breaker ball there too. The last two pitches breaker balls, and you could see Albert really dialed up for that fastball. If that's down, he probably strikes him out. 
elevated enough right there that Albert could get a piece. And Albert has not looked good against the breaking ball, but Fontenot's fastball has been electric. Let's see if he goes back to it. This time, throwing it up in the zone. Tried it. So 58 pitches now for Fontenot. Paul Maneri has his closer. Zach Cass getting loose to the bullpen. Pitching coach Alan Dunn will call the pitches. He knows drama late. Mm. Is right. <laughs> that's like when you you're going to pass the police officer on the interstate. In. Yeah, that that's that's the danger zone based on what we saw last night. The further this at bat goes, the more of an advantage that Albert has. We see more. more the Just off the plate inside, two and two. Love for, to see Fontenot throw that curveball down. Staying in the same plane right now. Fire for fastball in, yeah. But I tell you what, he's he's on fumes right now too. It is everything that Fontenot has. Vandy has finished off Duke. The Commodores are going back to Omaha. The Florida State win here tonight. They'll be returning to the College World Series. Again, Fatma delivers. Got him! We go to the tenth. Red stick the side of this one, and will we have a game three? Louisville and Bandy are headed there. Ole Miss and Arkansas will have a game three tomorrow. And they're late in Lubbock, Oklahoma State, trailing Texas Tech eight to six in the ninth. That's a game three. Josh Smith leads off the tenth for LSU. Antonio Velez still on the mound. Smith corks it deep right field. Foul. And all the LSU fans have to take their hearts out of their throats. Such a good hitter. He really is. You pitch him away, he'll go the other way. You leave it up, and he's not afraid to hit 0-2. Smith, second round pick of the Yankees. He's two for four tonight. A Baton Rouge native. Two and two. An approach from Velez, especially with the slider. Away, away, away. Smith starting to recognize that. Josh Smith not happy with the call, but that looked like a strike to me. That was just frozen. Surprises me a little just based on the reaction we had seen from the previous two. He had really tracked him, but this one, that's exactly, exactly where Nelson had the glove set up. So with one down, Giovanni DiGiacomo comes to the plate. 
Can't find the slider, nothing in one. DeGiacomo, excuse me, came up with a huge late game hit in the SEC tournament against Mississippi State in a game that would go 17 innings and last six and a half hours. He homered in the eighth inning that time. Little dribbler back to the mound. Pirouette and a toss. And DeGiacomo is retired. He can get down the line. He can absolutely fly. May be the fastest on the team. He's Zach Watson, DePlantis, all of them. You line them up, run a 60, and they're all going to fly. Swinging butt right there, and I think that one surprised Velez when he turned around because you don't think DeGiacomo is going to be that close and ended up bang bang. So here's LSU's all time hits leader, Antoine DuPlantis. Three for four tonight, home run in the fourth, RBI single in the sixth, and knocked in another run as part of a two-run eighth to tie it. Two and oh. Surge for DePlantis this season. He's gone yard 12 times. Controversy in the fourth. Fair or foul? Gone for sure. Whether or not it went behind that fair pole or in front of the fair pole, we looked at it plenty of times. I'm still not 100% convinced. At the end, it was called fair, upheld, and that was the first LSU ball of the game. I'm not apologizing to you. I say those letters are hollow, so we could have seen we could have seen the ball behind the pole also on that one. Yeah, that was not fair. But, but are they? Or no, are they? That's uh, paint. That's paint. Yeah. Okay. So that's clear. So then I don't apologize. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't paying to anyone. I wasn't expected one. 3-2, two, two outs. That's all I know with the all-time hits leader at the plate. If, the, if that's your form of, of an apology, I'll accept it. All the fans, the LSU fans, want to see another one just like it. And that's not a form of an apology. <laughs> the payoff fought off. Real drama in Lubbock. Texas Tech leads eight to six in the top of the ninth. But Oklahoma State's got two on and two out, and their home run hitter at the plate. Who's going through that man's mind tonight? A whirlwind of emotions for everybody involved. This one's line foul. Standing room only means easier access to the foul balls. Both teams winning record in extra innings. Bounced up the middle. It is a four-hit night for Antoine DePlantis, and the tenth continues for LSU. He can put some at bats together. Foul the tough ones off. Just hook one down the line to stay alive. Then gets one that does catch more of the plate. It looked like another slider from Velez. That's a fastball. Fastball from Velez down and away. Not a bad pitch, but DePlana stays on it. Right back up the middle. It's a two out single. Two singles, a double, and a home run tonight for DePlana. All time, LSU is 9 and 2 in extra innings in the NCAA tournament. It's the best record for any team that has played more than five extra inning games. They'll keep a close eye on DePlantis.
Texas Tech just won. Red Raiders going back to Omaha. What a thrilling game in Lubbock. Texas Tech back to Omaha for the first time in six years. Yeah. They hadn't been before, before 2014. Yeah. Two balls and a strike to Daniel Cabrera. Exactly what he does when he goes to first when he goes home. Back. Talk about the foot again. Left foot, toes up, he goes to first. Toe down from the left foot, he goes home. So all you have to do is focus on that left foot, not the right one, the one that's on the rubber. This one's lifted foul and out of play. Talking with Paul Maneri before the game today. He must have gone back and watched the broadcast. He said, I wish Eduardo would have told me that. <laughs> Easier said than done, though. You're trained all your life as a, as a position player to be looking at the other one. It's all of a sudden from one moment to another. I still was. I didn't listen to you enough last night. Well, on top of that, <laughs> Maneri said, before the game, he said, I just don't like running on lefties. I, I'm not comfortable with it. I think it's too big a risk. See that toe come up? As soon as that toe comes up, he's going over to first base. Watch right here. Goes up. You see it? Now I have to probably look for his front spike, right? Well, you have to look a little bit more than that. Does it again. The reason is because you get into the ball of your foot when you're going to home plate. So if he's going to home plate, then you're going to use you're going to use the rubber to push off and go towards home. That's when you really dig that foot in. Strike three, swing and runner didn't matter after all. Fourth strikeout for Velez. We go to the last of the tenth, tied at four for an update on what's going on in college baseball. Back to Kevin Connors. So Devin Fontenot has been magnificent for LSU out of the bullpen, but walk two. In the ninth inning, he hasn't allowed a hit after entering with one out in the sixth. Here's a look at his work tonight. It's been different kind of stuff from Fontenot that we saw last night. 16 pitches last night, but a third of an inning did not look incredibly sharp. He's looked extremely sharp tonight. Fastball has a ton of life. That all fastball slider for Fontenot. Strikeouts to end each of the last two innings. I am surprised that he's back out there now, though. Most pitches he had thrown in a game this year, 60. Now it's 62 after throwing yesterday. And Eddie, you said it a few innings ago. It's hard to come back from the emotion that Fontenot has shown at the end of the previous two innings. He'll start with Drew Mendoza here in the last half of the 10th. Remember, Florida State is the designated home team here for the second game of this three-game series. Mendoza one for three. Struck out in the seventh. Fontenot got him looking then. One and one. Palmineri doesn't have uh, much depth in the bullpen anyway after their starter last night. Cole Henry only lasted two innings. So what's the first key to look for for fatigue from Fontenot? Velocity and control of the fastball. The velocity seems like it's down a tick this inning. We saw a lot of twos and threes. This inning's been 90 and 91. And just whether or not he can control that fastball. Right side. Flag down by Beloso. Lost it. Broussard backs him up. Got him! What a play! 
First base coach Tyler Holt says the final was off the bag. They'll want to take another look at this one. What a job by Brad Broussard to stick with it. It's pretty good now because it's a tough play for Beloso. He gets enough of it. Broussard already pushed to that side. Yeah, we may have an argument here. Right foot was on the bag when he got there. Is it there when he gets the throw? Looks like it is. Yeah, it looks like the heel may be. If they have called the other ones inconclusive, this one right here from that angle is tough to turn. Watch his heel. And we're oh. blocked out there by Tyler Holt. It was his heel when the ball hit his glove. The ball beat it. The ball definitely beat the base runner there. Watch right here. He catches it. I from that angle, you cannot see it. I think he was on. But you're right. I, I don't think there's anything conclusive there that can say absolutely yes or no. How invested is the former big leaguer Tyler Holt? There may be here, though. Yeah, but we don't know when he catches the baseball. Okay. And because of the okay. leg, okay. the angle. Stay with me here, though. Okay. You're right. Guys, he's, I think he's safe. If you're going to make safe. the call from that angle, I think it's tough to overturn from that angle. Here's my reason, okay? The one angle that we had showed, it looked like the heel was still on the base when the ball when the ball hit into the club. So you're right. The one angle, you can't see where the ball is. Right. You can't see it from another. So from another, you can you can then go back and say, okay, but it looked like the heel was on the bag the first time because that's when the ball goes into his glove. I just, when we showed it the second time, I if don't think he's he originally on the called safe, the call would stand. Because he's called out, I think this one would stand also. I just don't see how they can cut and paste and overturn this call. You'd have to take a look at both of those angles side by side. And the attempt to do that will probably keep us here a little while longer. And I think the best view would have been the low first angle. But Tyler Holt's leg was in the way. Wow. So replay has twice been inconclusive, or so it seems. And Mendoza is out on your typical 3-4-1 ground out. Huge out. Huge out and a huge play right there by Rosso. It helps that he's already pushed to the pull side. If he's not, there's no chance that he gets to it. But just to have the presence of mind to spin and throw, and it's a really athletic play by Fontenot to take that throw and keep that right foot at least close enough to the bag where they couldn't overturn it. So here's Robbie Martin. He is 0 for 3 tonight. And he looks at 90 over the heart of the plate. Nothing in one. And you're right. The velocity is certainly down from Fontenot on the fastball here in the 10th. Now a career high 67 pitches. And the wind has died down. It was a factor early on, not anymore. The wind is left, but not a single fan has. Tyler Holt making plays. They're through, through the stands and the LSU fans. I can't tell if they're berating him or saluting him. I couldn't be. <laughs> Got him smiling now. <laughs> Martin drew a walk and score back in the second against starter Atlanta Marceau. It's the only time he's reached base tonight. Popped him up. A look for Reed. Will it stay in the park? No, under the roof. Photographers on the field here at the box. And that little photographer's area chalked off is out of play. Out of Just like a there. dugout would be. Yep. <laughs> you got Chris Reed, former high school football player, charging at you. Pitches so far tonight after throwing 19 yesterday. This is pure adrenaline. When is adrenaline enough? 
Breaking ball for strike three. Seventh strikeout for Devin Fontenot in relief. Fastball's played up the entire night. Wasn't necessarily trying to go back door right there. You could see Saul Garza, the catcher, sitting up on the inside part of the plate to move his body to the outside. Fontenot maybe gets the benefit of, of a little bit extra on the outside there. Center fielder and closer, J.C. Flowers. Swing and a miss at 94. He's dialed it back up to your question about the, the adrenaline piece. Mm -hmm. Now it can kick back in. I mean, it, it gets to a point where you can only go on it so long. But with two outs, not surprising to see a little bit more for Fontenot. But if he can get out of this one, I just don't think he can send it back out again. J.C. Flowers has 13 home runs this season. He had a great regional in Athens to power Florida State here. Florida State as a team smashed the ball with the wind blowing out all weekend at Georgia. Strike two on the breaking ball. Last time throws flowers on the same pitch for strike three. We'll go back to it. The one two pitch. Got him. K number eight for Fontenot, a new career high. And we head to the 11th in Baton Rouge. So in the LSU dugout, momentum from the fastball of Devin Fontenot. We are tied at four, headed to the top of the 11th. A Florida State win puts them back in Omaha a chance for their first ever national championship. Uh, confident Fontenot looking at the camera because he knows he's done his part to try and get LSU to a game three. I think Fontenot's going to go back out there again. That's the way it looks right now. He has thrown 74 pitches. A career high. Zach Watson, K. Veloso, and Saul Garza do up for LSU here in the 11th. Good action in the LSU bullpen, so maybe Fontenot is done. I think they're walking back in. Last time up, Zach Watson delivered an RBI single in the eighth. He's had some really good swings against Valens. Three pitches, three strikes to dispatch Zach Watson. Fifth strikeout for Antonio Velez, who's been absolutely fantastic. He's been outstanding. That slider down and into the right hand of hitters he has been chasing. Zach has his argument this case right now. Hmm. What, what could that conversation be? I don't know if, if Paul Maneri asked for him to come down or if Zach has went down on his own. To the bullpen or back from the bullpen? Back from the bullpen. Veloso <laughs> drives it high and deep into the Louisiana night. The wind has died and so will the fly ball onto the track. Wow. If that was an hour ago, that one's halfway up the bleachers. I would say if it was half hour ago, it would have been up the bleachers. Well, also got pretty much almost everyone out of their seats. He thought he had it. Mm. 
It's amazing, isn't it, how the dimensions of a ballpark can stay the same, but the play changes dramatically. Catcher Saul Garza. Line shot, first pitch swinging. They got to bring Chris Reed up. KP, remember a couple weeks ago we were in Hoover, Alabama on a Wednesday night? LSU and Mississippi State. We were there on a Thursday morning. <laughs> we were. They decided to play 17 innings in a game that lasted six hours and 43 minutes that ended at 4.03 a.m. Eastern. What are you doing? I'm jinxing you because yeah, you're the only one that has a flight tomorrow. That's just, that's I do just not. Factual information. Only was I do not. Document. It just feels familiar is all I'm saying. Reed looks at a strike. He struck out swinging last time off. So Hess is now in the dugout after they radio down to the bullpen and asked him to come back. And Trent Vittmeyer just ran down there for LSU, not throwing yet, but he and Hess are now in the bullpen together. Yeah, Hess went back down. And the discussion could have been, A, how many do you have? And B, here's the situation. Runner gets on, you're in the ball game. You're not going to start the end. Could it also be how much time do you need? Because if you're comfortable, we're going to have to go to you quickly. It won't take him too long. He was already hot earlier. And two strikes to Reed. Top of the 11. They're sending everybody down to the LSU bullpen. Mikhail Hilliard down there right now, and it looks like Hilliard will start to throw. Remember, let us see the visiting team. We'll have Hess to close if necessary, but to extend an inning and to start an inning, would you go with Hillary? Keep it clean, right? And the difference between a clean inning and a dirty one. I'm right, throwing Bittmeyer up. Curveball specialist Hilliard up. Payoff to the senior Reed. Strike three call. Strikeout number six out of the bullpen for Antonio Velez. We go to the last half of the 11th, LSU four, Florida State four from a packed house in Baton Rouge. This is the postseason, game number two of the Baton Rouge Super Regional. Everything on the line, a must win for LSU. A trip to Omaha awaiting Florida State if they can get a run and find a win. And the emotions running high on both sides. Tom Hart, Eduardo Perez, Kyle Peterson, our sensational ESPN crew. We've seen a little bit of everything tonight. And we're going to see more Devin Fontenot on the 11th. How surprised are you that Fontenot has already set a career high in pitches after throwing last night is back out here for the 11th. Well, I was surprised to see him in the 10th. I didn't think that we would see him then, and I definitely didn't think that we would see him now. I'd be interested to know what that conversation was with Zach Hess, because Zach Hess ran back out of the bullpen, and then two more LSU leaders got up and started throwing. I think he was trying to explain to him why he's not going to be the guy that's going to be called upon if necessary this inning. That would make sense. Now, so if, if they we get, did the, get lead, the lead, your ball. yes. 6-0 hitter Carter Smith to lead off. A hopper for Beloso. One down. Guys, I played with the St. Louis Cardinals, and Tony La Russa was our manager. And in spring training, he would always say, when we go into extra innings, do not try to hit home runs. If you do, the strikeouts are going to pile. The rollovers are going to pile. Yes, you might get one here and there, but just try to stay with your approach. Line drives, base hits. Continue the line. You see a lot of extra inning games go long because players try to do more with th than what they're capable of. Here's Nander De Sedas for Florida State. 0 for 4 tonight. The 
did you feel as a player you were able to counter that? Well, when you're told by your skipper and you're told by your manager that this is the best way through experience and you're coachable, yes. You follow that instruction. But human nature wants you to be that hero. Mm -hmm. It's why so many extra inning games turn into one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And that's how you stay at the ballpark until 4.03 a.m. Just going to keep saying it, Eduardo. Lifted to left. Cabrera. Two down. There's also another thing that happens, and we see it a lot more in college baseball than you do in pro. Is when the game gets late and the stakes are high, mistakes happen. Yes, we saw it last night at UCLA on the defensive side. Mm -hmm. Florida State hasn't had a hit since the fourth inning. That last hit was Tim Becker's RBI double. Matthew Nelson again. Earlier this season, Matthew Nelson was playing at Louisville, and in the on-deck circle, some Louisville fans started to razz him about his number. They said, who wears 63? The only guys who wear 63 are the pitchers in spring training who are about to be released. Nobody wears that. You're a nobody. Nelson homered. Came back to the plate the second time. They still gave him a hard time. He homered again. And after he stepped across the plate after his second home run, he said, I think 63 fits me just fine. What number did you have in spring training, KP? Uh, 79. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And it was a short stay that year. Bad sign if your numbers add up to double digits like that. Ball and two strikes to Nelson. The home crowd to their feet again. They need a win to come back tomorrow night and keep the party rolling. Fontenot efficient here in the 11. Wow. His ninth strikeout, all in relief. We'll see the top of the order for LSU as we head to the 12th. Devin Fontenot is done, and what a performance. Paul Maneri chatting with him in the LSU dugout. He said, Bud, you gave us all you could. That's what we just got to take the baseball away. I tell you what, Antonio Bella is his matchup. He came in, gave up the hot shot that was off Mendoza's glove, but since then, Bella has been so good for Florida staying out of their bullpen. So what's your gut feeling now? Is that what you're looking for? Yeah. Uh, that would be your gut. <laughs> well, I'm right there in the same boat with you. We're gonna we're gonna call over walk-ons. They promise they'll stay open late for us. Brad Broussard at the plate. First pitch swinging and he pops it up. JC Flowers has it. One down and back to the top of the order in Josh Smith. It just has a feeling that if you can get to Antoine Duplantis here in the 12th, good things will happen for LSU. Duplantis has a four hit night, adding to his LSU record talent. Smith is two for five tonight. Antonio Velez has worked out of trouble in the 10th and the 11th. Twice he's allowed hits, but the secret to his success is he hasn't allowed a hit until there were two out in the inning. <laughs> SEC Pac-12 matchup, Starkville, Mississippi, sold out crowd at Duty Noble, and Stanford leads 1-0, top of the third there. But Mississippi straight with Elijah uh, State with Elijah McNamee threatening. Three balls in a strike.
What a day for college baseball. And what a night. High, straightaway center. And once again, this time of night, Park playing huge. Two down. Again, you look at what LSU has been able to do since the ninth inning. Fly ball to right field to end the ninth inning. One ground ball out in the tenth. The others have been strikeouts. Another fly ball out. Two more this inning. You have to be able to hit the ball on the ground. Line drives. Drew Bianco may be the magic stick for LSU now. Freshman from Oxford, Mississippi. His dad coaching Ole Miss right now. They'll have a game three tomorrow against Arkansas. Pinch hitting for Giovanni DiGiacomo. Three home runs this season for Bianco. One of them came on his dad's 52nd birthday against Ole Miss. And he gets hit. Yep, just like he drew it up. And a big slugger in there to take one off the leg. And now they do get to Duplantis. If the LSU, you take him any way you can get him. It looked like a first pitch slider right there from Bellas that he just held on a little bit too long. A four hit night for LSU's all time hit leader, Antoine Duplantis. Duplantis has started every game this season. He's been a regular in this Tigers lineup since day one. And two years ago, helped LSU to the College World Series. Nothing at two. He is a triple away from the cycle tonight. Bianco not going anywhere. A ball and two strikes now. I think the plan is right here with the approach that Bellas has had in both of his at bats. He's just looking to use the left side of the field. Shoot that ball somewhere to the left. But he did with an RBI single in the eighth. It's no secret what he's going to try to do to him. It's slider, slider on the outside part of the plate to the left. He's trying to get him to fish after one. Works so far. Drama at the dude. Mississippi State has loaded the bases on Stanford in the third inning. Down one zip. Here's a 2 2 to Duplantis. Popped him up. Salvatore back, and he will haul it in to take us to the bottom of the 12th inning. Postseason hero Tim Becker will lead off with, for Florida State, followed by Salvatore and Albert. So Devin Fontenot is back out there. Longest outing in his career, longest by an LSU reliever this season. It seemed, by all indications, that Paul Maneri was patting him on the back and saying, thanks for all you've done. I thought he was, too. I've been wrong two straight innings, but it's getting to the point now to where it feels like the fastball didn't have quite the carry that it did before. This Florida State offense has now seen Fontenot on some of them two times around. And now you're going to get to the heart of the over. 9 1 2 right here, and they'll start it off with a pitch hit. Tonight's starter, Lana Marceau, with the background. Head coach Palmineri, all the favor. Trying to get back to Omaha. So Tim Becker, due up. Remember, he had a two home run game in Athens, but they're going to pinch hit for him. Nico Baldor, transfer from Miami, hasn't played much lately. Going to get a chance to hit. Here in the 12. Valdor was in the mix of first base earlier this season. His last hit came on May 7th against Jacksonville in a midweek game. He was 0 for 9 since. 
did not have a plan appearance in last week's regional or in the ACC tournament. Let's have something in common with Tim Becker. He too was on the Florida State club team last year, but that's because he had to sit out after transferring from the Hurricanes. It's a pipeline. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> It's our 14 games at Miami two years ago, the 1-1. One, one. 92 for a strike, still in the lower third. Got him up in the zone. Strikeout number 10. We'll hang another K here, and it remains to be seen how long Fontenot will stay in this game. Another reason that it's curious that he's back out here for the 12th is that you assume that they would love a clean inning for Mikhail Hilliard to enter, like we talked about before, and he seems to be the next guy up. It's going to be hard to do now. And I think what's going on is Coach Maneri is realizing that the Knowles have just not had any good swings whatsoever against Fontenot, and he continues to tell them, I'm okay. It comes a time you have to protect him against himself. There's a good swing right there. Salvatore, first pitch breaking ball, and he was sitting on it. First hit since the fourth inning for Florida State. Remember, this is LSU Stadium, but Florida State is the home team today. And here's Reese Albert, 0 for 5 today, two home runs yesterday. <laughs> We keep waiting for Pulmonary to take that step out of the dugout. It won't happen here. Albert's homered four times in the postseason. And he was trying to do it for a fifth time. Nothing in one. Albert looks a lot. Looks late on most of the pitches thinking off speed because that's what he received early on in the game and Fontenot has given him a heavy dosage of that fastball. This will be the 90th pitch of the night for Devin Fontenot. Another one too. And with that shoulder, every time he swings and miss, it hurts him a lot more. Mm -hmm. See that pitch on the outside part? Hard for him to extend. Wants everything in. Sublex right shoulder. Cost him 18 games in the middle of the season for Florida State. A different lineup with him in there. Runner at first is Salvatore. Here's the 0-2 to Albert. Off the glove of Garza. Salvatore will get a free 90. What a big break right there for Florida State. 0 2 trying to elevate a fastball, and Garza just missed it. Just flat missed it. And for the Knowles right now, they said could win this ball game, send Mike Martin back to Omaha. Look at the eyes. The eyes started to go to the baseline a little bit right there. Charge Fontenot with a wild pitch. Wild oh, pass ball. That's a pass ball. The one two to Albert. Winning run at second base. Struck him out. 11th K of the night for Fontenot. He's got him on an inside fastball the last two times, too. It was fastball away, fastball away. Then the ball that got past Garza that time just locked him up with a fastball in. There's still plenty of carry on. He was trying to go away again. That one sneaks back in, but enough to get past Albert. There is zero chance that I would let Drew Mendoza hit right here. You just put him at first, right? I, absolutely. Drew Mendoza, three-hole hitter for Florida State. He's been held to just one hit tonight, but he is the most dangerous hitter in his FSU batting order. Team high 16 home runs. Mendoza, you've got to be looking for a good fastball. Don't you? Think? You have to. Yeah. 
93 miles per hour, 93rd pitch of the night. Mendoza, third round pick of the Nationals. Homer twice last week in Athens. Here's the old one. Ran away from him. One away. There's Mike Martin's wife, Carol. They'll celebrate their 55th anniversary later this summer. Watson's playing very shallow in center. Isn't he? I know. He's, he's playing where you would think he would play with one out, not with two. He's had to cover a lot of ground going back towards the wall here in the late innings. Speedy center fielder for LSU. And Mendoza has the power to put it over his head. You already have a shortstop playing up the middle. Anything hard, even if you're playing a few steps back, Watson still has an opportunity to get the runner out of home. Yeah, I'm just, I'm more worried about the fly ball from Mendoza if I'm the outfield right now for LSU. Okay. I'm surprised they're playing that shallow in center field. Fast on the outside corner of the plate now to get it to a 1 2 count. He elevates right here. He gets Mendoza. That's a call by allowing Mendoza to hit in this opportunity here. Ball and two strikes on Florida State's best hitter. Winning run at second base for Florida State. A base hit sends him to Omaha. The pitch. He didn't chase two and two. Those are such a rare combination. It's power, it's patience, and there's swing and miss also. He's not walked 69 times, struck out 69 times every year. Fourth in the nation in walks. The 2 to Mendoza. Oh, Line drive, base hit around third, Salvatore. The throw never gets there. Mike Martin's going back to Omaha. Another chance at the brass ring. Yeah. Oh. 